What's up? <laughs> the moment we go live is the moment we hear from the final contestant we've been waiting oh, for. Oh, is that true? So, yes. Do you have to sound check them? Um, I could. I, uh, I'm sure it's fine. Are you, are you, uh, are you sure? Yeah. I could like, you know, you could like, I could just do it a solo for a second. You know? Yeah. If you, you if you really, want. Should it's I hop out really quick? I mean, okay. like, are you, you're still going to be cam on, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll okay. just hear me. So you'll the just... mouth readers in chat will be able to tell what I'm... All right. Uh, That's fine. All right. I'll be RB, y'all. Okay. Welcome, y'all. Good evening, chat. How is everyone? How is everyone? Um, hello. Hello, everyone. I never ask. I never, I was just telling Meg before we went live. I never ask for this, but if you haven't yet, you haven't shared Sliced with your friends, if you haven't shared Sliced with your, your discords that you're in, your coding groups, your Twitter, if you haven't shared the wonders of Sliced out there quite yet, second to last episode, and the last time we'll see four contestants together, so. Tonight's the night, y'all. Get those RTs out there, get those, get those hashtag sliced tweets, messages, whatever it may be. Send them all out, y'all. Send them away. Tweet, post, Link over. Welcome back, y'all. Ghetto Bob, Emil, Max, Rate 2020. Welcome back. John the Geek, Adam, AG, Neuron Stats, welcome back, y'all. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome back. Opus, welcome back. Y'all, you know, I say it every time, and, you know, one of my most favorite things to do is check out who's in chat, you know, and uh, welcome all of y'all back for another uh, rendition of our favorite data science game show. So welcome back, y'all. It does mean a lot to me, and, and seeing so many names over the last... 11 weeks now uh same name as every week that uh that does uh that warms my cold heart so uh i do appreciate everyone coming in every week and and supporting me and supporting meg on our on our sliced journey so thanks for coming back in up yep, i'm i'm I, back nice landing all good Yes, he is good. He is apparently using a brand new machine that he has not used for anything ever before tonight. That does not sound his... good. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's what he's working with, so... That does not sound good. Yeah. But, uh, <coughs> that's why we love Colab, right? So he's a Colab. Oh, yeah, that's he'll right. He'll be fine. He'll, he'll yeah, be... He's, got a, he's got a browser. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he'll be good. Welcome back, Eric. Samuel Crane, welcome back. Do you go by Sam? You just, uh, you just, or, or like, Crane? Do you go by Crane? Do you ever go by Rizdal, Meg? Do you ever go by Rizdal? Um, I've had, like, professors call me Rizdal, like, Hey, Rizdal! You know, like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but no. Not a lot of people have, have referred to me by my last name. That's not like a casual name you went by? No. No. I mean, if people wanted to start, you know, that's fine with me. It's it's a very unique, pretty unique last name. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I've only like met. Riz, I'm aware. I've only met one other Rizdal. You've oh, my sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Kenobi, yep. welcome back. Isamore, welcome back. Marshmallow, welcome back. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back. How's everyone's evening? Y'all excited for? Semi-final slice tonight? 
I'm pretty excited. I don't know. I'm pretty excited. I feel like... I don't know. Like... It's a new feeling for me. Because this is, like, the last time we'll see four contestants at the same time. Uh, That's right. And, uh... And they're all, you know... I, you know, not to... Not to be all warm and fuzzy, but they're all champions. They yeah. are! Oh my god, yes, totally. <laughs> they're all champions. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the final Y4. That was that's good. Strong. The memes are strong tonight. The memes are strong tonight. Len needs needed more CPU for tuning. Yeah, he's in the cloud, you know, he's in the cloud. Early prediction of the night. One Python, one R user are moving on to the finals. Wow. Okay. That is, that is a strong prediction. But that, which which of each? Yeah. That is what we will find out very, very soon. Can you believe that we're about to find out who's going to be the finalists? Honestly, no. Like, it's, when I, yet again, one of those things that really just dawned on me, like, earlier today, that it's like, wow, only two more episodes of Sliced? Like, this is our last episode with four contestants? Like, we'll only have, we'll be down to two to next week. Like, it's, it's, it's wild, so. Yeah. yeah. Kind of surreal. Kind of surreal. Like, for me, like, Slice has become a lifestyle at this point, right? So it's hard to sort of imagine my life without Sliced. Um, I mean, it is definitely In the same sense. Well, yeah, we'll st definitely still be working on Slice-related stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It is It is true that, like, you know, for the folks for the folks at home who think Slice is a Tuesday thing, mm -hmm. it, it is truly a seven-day-a-week deal, which... Um, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> we have a lot of folks helping us out on Sliced, and that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Slice has grown into a very interesting thing now. But yes, uh, pretty excited, pretty excited for tonight. Welcome back, Tan, Raider fan, David J. Jackson. Welcome back, y'all. It's gonna be the fall replacement. Just my typical random streams. Can you believe on Tuesdays I'm just gonna stream like I regularly did? <laughs> no. <laughs> like my Tuesday streams are gonna be just normal streams again. <laughs> Final girl. True. Welcome back, Sri. Um, it is. Women women rooting for Julia Silgi tonight. I dig it. <laughs> yes. I, I, I dig people like, kind of like, you know, having like contestants they root for like throughout the season it's pretty cool like it's what the I've fact that wanted. it's like something that you can follow yeah like i've been following like landon's trajectory like ethan's story like yeah it's just cool like um they've got like character arcs like you know d rob can make memes now like you know <laughs> it's uh it's pretty cool <laughs> pretty cool yeah um it is pretty cool character development yeah i i think the thing i think the thing that I am going to, maybe the thing I'm going to miss most, which hopefully, I, you know, everyone who comes in on Slice tonight, I would hope that y'all come back to my regular streams, but I think I'm going to miss just how, how loud chat gets on these Tuesdays. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty hype. It is. Um... Speaking of hype, I believe it's time to hype up the crowd, Meg. Let's do it, yes. Two more of these, Meg. We can't start getting sentimental yet. It's too early. Maybe at the end of the episode. Oh, man. Two <laughs> more of these. Um. Okay. 
Um, I'll see y'all in about five minutes. Welcome back, Meg. Oh, hi there. <laughs> I didn't see you come in. <laughs> and welcome back, chat, to another episode. And not just any episode of Sliced. We are in the semi-finals of Slice tonight. And if this is your first time on Slice, you've caught quite literally uh, the last time we'll be doing a group of four, four contestants tonight, trying to create predict models, data visualization, and find what we call golden features, all to gain points, and the person, the two people with the most points at the end of the night will win. Uh, I'm Nick Wynn, I'm the manager of data science over at KFC, and with me is Meg Rizdahl. Hi, I'm Meg Rizdahl, I lead product at Kaggle. And uh, Meg, what are we, uh, you know, what are you excited about tonight on the semi-finals of Sliced? I'm just excited for this matchup. I think it's like 
you know, each kind of phase of Slice were really notching things up. Um, you know, whether it was like the regular David season, Robinson, you know, from round one to round two to the playoffs, and now we're in the semifinals. And <laughs> sorry, but I, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Suddenly, <I> got... <laughs> David. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I think like this is just like another caliber uh, that we've got. You know, of folks tonight, we've got D. Rob and Julia. Obviously, you know, huge in their field, but we've also seen, um, you know, just incredible performances from Landon and Ethan throughout the whole season. So to see them all together tonight uh, is pretty exciting. So, well, yeah. I, uh, what are you, yeah, what are you excited for? <laughs> I'm ex, I don't know. See, I, I'm, my feelings are so split, but the thing I'm most excited about tonight is literally just the four strongest competitors in the field duking it out and the points are going to be so tight tonight the loss is going to be really tight the data visualization is going to be tight it's going to be really hard to get any points i feel so i feel like if there's any moment to go all out maybe tonight we'll see something different from some folks maybe something new for some folks uh without further ado though uh let us introduce our contestants good David Robinson. David Robinson, Principal Data Scientist at Heat. My name is Julia Silgi. I'm a data scientist and software engineer at um, R Studio. My name is Ethan Douglas, and I'm a data analyst at The Athletic. Landon Butner, Texas A&M alumni and upcoming data scientist. And uh, if you are interested in playing along, y'all, uh, there is a uh there is oh god what, what is going on here okay um if you're interested in playing along y'all uh exclamation data will get you the data and uh feel free to model and submit your models up into kaggle as we play slice tonight for contestants julia silgi david robinson d rob uh, Ethan Douglas and Landon Buchner, who in chat goes by Pixel, on Twitter goes by Magi1. And uh, I appreciate everyone coming in, hanging out, and uh, <laughs> yes, very excited. Um, very, very excited for everyone to be here for our semifinals. And, um, you know, we're doing some things a little differently tonight. Uh, and, and hopefully some of y'all who've been, uh, hanging out with us, um, uh, throughout the last 10 weeks up to this week, um, hopefully you enjoy some of the different things we do tonight. So, uh, Meg, what do we know about, uh, David Robinson? Yeah, we can, we can start with Dave. Um, so yeah, so a little bit about Dave kind of coming in from the rest of the season tonight and how his matchups have looked with the rest of our contestants tonight. Um, so between Dave, David, D Rob and Julia, these two have never been in a matchup before, which is, I think pretty exciting because this, you know, we, we talked about this being a little bit of like a Stack Overflow reunion for some of us tonight. Um, Julia, Silgi, David Robinson, and myself all are former Stack Overflow employees. If we've got some folks in chat who are Stack Overflow, Stack Exchange, you know, say sup. Um, so I know that they were both excited to be matched up together tonight. Um, in week seven, uh, D-Rob was against Ethan and uh, D-Rob came first in Viz where Ethan came in third. Uh, week nine, uh, D. Rob was uh, battled against Landon. Uh, I think this is his first matchup against against Landon. But the two had, you know, become clear rivals even before they were ever matched up. Um, with Landon, you know, participating uh, in the episodes uh, against uh, D. Rob, um, and in that week, D. Rob again came first in data viz. Landon was last; he was fourth uh, in that episode. Um, and then also in week nine, uh, David came in second in modeling and Landon was first. Um, and in that episode, importantly, the, the evaluation metric was log loss. And the, the difference between their scores, between Landon and Dave, was 0. 0.000. 0. 
two, nine. I wanted to say that a little bit like Nick, how Nick says it. Um, how, how did so, it feel? How did that feel? You know? It felt great. It felt good. Yeah, I'm like, I want to tear these sleeves off right now. Um, and so I think that's like another, you know, another matchup that I'll be, we'll be watching out for is uh, the Landon Dave kind of like very friendly rivalry that has, uh, has developed over the course of, of Sliced really coming to a head here tonight in the semifinals. Um, let's go over to Ethan Douglas and, uh, what's a few facts about Ethan, Meg? Yeah. So, uh, Ethan has been, I think, really fun to watch, uh, throughout Sliced. He's, um, uh, you know, uh, he, in, in week three, he was against, uh, Landon and Landon, you know, has not been a strong data visualizer and came in fourth, whereas Ethan, Came out on top in second. Um, so where you know we had thought Landon was maybe a better modeler than Ethan, um, and Ethan maybe a stronger data visualizer. Um, but we can kind of see how things will shake out later, uh, differently later in the season. In week seven, uh, he battled against D Rob. Uh, Ethan actually came in first in modeling, kind of proving that he had chops not just in data visualization but also in modeling, um, and was second overall in that episode. Um, and then week ten. Again, uh, this is an episode where he and Julia were matched up. Ethan came first in modeling. Um, so really, really, you know, has some strong modeling chops against, you know, the likes of, uh, of, of D-Rob and against um, uh, Landon. I think seeing all three of those, like, really strong modelers all in the same episode is going to be pretty intense. Um, plus, you know, he, you know, held his own in terms of data visualization, which we know both D-Rob and Julia are quite strong at. So That's it's right. going to be, yeah, some intense matchups. Let's check out uh, Julia Silgi. And uh, what do we know about Julia up to now, Meg? Yeah, up till now. Um, like I said, she's never been matched up against D-Rob during the regular season or the playoffs. So... Um, that's a dynamic that we're, we're very, very excited to see between, you know, these two former co-workers and collaborators. They both wrote, uh, you know, the tidy text package, uh, that we're, um, we may see some, we see any use of, uh, use of tidy text tonight, Nick, do you think? We'll uh, see. We'll see. Um, but, uh, in week eight, she was matched up against Landon. Landon came third in data visualization in that episode where Julia came in first. And then week 10, she was matched against Ethan. Uh, Ethan, like Landon the previous week or in the, the, the previous episode, uh, came in third in Viz and Julia yet again came first um, in data visualization. You can see Julia has her console ready and she really just wants to dive in sooner than later. Uh, but last and definitely not least, maybe one of the biggest surprises of the season. Let's hear a little about Landon Buchner, Meg. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Landon is, um, has had a great story throughout uh, Sliced. He was one of our competitors from the pilot season of Sliced, where he did not fare very well whatsoever, and he has made a radical comeback to, to find himself here today in the semifinals, and, you know, also having landed a full-time job as a data scientist. <laughs> um so in, in week three, you know, looking at the, the season so far for Landon, in week three um, against Ethan, Landon came in first in modeling. Uh, so we, we, we did see that, you know, Ethan is also a top modeler. Um, that could be another kind of inspiration for a show. Next, America's next, next top, top model modeler. or whatever it is. Next yeah, top modeler. Top modeler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just going to throw out some ideas. Um, but uh, Landon came first in modeling and Ethan came in second. So... Quite, quite close. I think tonight's going to be really close in modeling, just saying. Um, in week eight, Landon was matched up against Julia. Landon came first in modeling, and, and Julia came last in modeling that episode. Week nine, uh, this is where we saw the Landon D Rob matchup. Landon came first in modeling, and D Rob came in second. Um, but as, as we said, like that was um, an incredibly close incredibly close matchup in terms of modeling between those two so and it's important to know y'all that uh landon uh is actually on a new rig tonight so uh you might notice that uh you know if you've been watching landon's point of view on slice for the last uh handful of times he's been on uh this is in his typical browser or his setup uh, and you can see that uh, he is playing music at uh through youtube 
So, um, uh, not his typical way, uh, but very excited to see if maybe a new hardware or a new keyboard or some new peripherals, uh, maybe that might throw a wrench in his flow. We'll see if that affects how he ends up doing tonight. Uh, tonight, before we get going, before we get, uh, before we, uh, talk too much about, uh, all the cool stuff that we're about to see tonight, uh, let us give a big round of applause, big thanks, hearts in chat to the people who've been supporting us, the places that have been supporting us, uh, this entire season, so shout out to our studio, Streamlit, NVIDIA, and Z by HP, if you're interested in uh, data science pre-builds, check out hp.com slash data science. Uh, what's the data set tonight, Meg? Yeah, so the data set that our contestants are working with is about house prices on Zillow. So this is a kind of like the data set that we had on um, Airbnb several weeks ago, um, but with some kind of different twists. So they've got... Um, property about uh or they've got information about the zillow property um all of these uh properties are in um austin texas if i'm not mistaken yes um so they've got different information about like the home type its location that's right latitude longitude maybe we'll see some you know uh maps, maps, tonight. <laughs> maps. um number of garage spaces whether it has a spot or not um, and other kind of like various attributes. And then what they're predicting is price range. So um, as opposed to um, like a, a continuous variable um, where maybe we, we would have cho chosen an evaluation metric like uh, RMSLE again, as we did for Airbnb, um, they'll be predicting a set of price ranges. So these are sort of like buckets of, of ranges of prices. And so that makes this a multi-class log loss problem uh, tonight, which is um, interesting because that is the same as last week, uh, last week's challenge. That is right. Also multi-class log loss. Yeah, so two multi-class log loss problems back to back. Two of the contestants tonight, Ethan and uh, Julia, both had multi-class log loss. Uh, D-Rob and Landon have not seen a multi-class log loss problem. So perhaps maybe some weight towards the people who have had a little experience in the season format uh, with multi-class log loss problems in the time frame, but to be honest, at the end of the day, it's all modeling. You gotta get the lowest log loss. You gotta get the nicest, coolest data viz, most informational, most uh, useful data viz out there. And what are our golden features tonight, Meg? Oh yeah, let me tell you about the golden features. So uh, the first golden feature is to plot lat long as an XY with year built the property that the year was built as the hue. And then the second golden feature uh, is plot, plot, uh, make a plot that facets by city. Um, so there's something like five or so cities um, or um, what are they like? Suburbs. Divisions of suburbs or something of Austin. Um, so faceting by that is, is what we'll be looking for for the second golden feature. And each golden feature is worth 10 points. Our content, any contestant can find any golden feature at any time they don't disappear after somebody finds them so um they're there up for grabs for all of our contestants tonight so plot lat long as xy and then plot with facet by city and right now y'all if you're wondering why folks haven't started coding yet uh, everyone's just writing notes and everything uh, if this is your first time on slice welcome uh Contestants get the data set dropped on them at 8.45 p.m. Eastern, and they have 15 minutes to review the entire data set. Um, at 9 p.m. Eastern, they can begin coding, and from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern, uh, they are putting together models, they're putting it together data viz, and trying to find those golden features Meg just mentioned. All of these get you points. Uh, golden features, if you find them, that's 10 points each. Uh, data visualization is worth up to 40 points. 20 points will be dispersed by Meg. 20 points will be dispersed by me. And we get to uh, assign those points however we see fit. Uh, so if I'm feeling, uh, you know, a certain way about data viz, then maybe I score a little differently today than I did yesterday. Uh, and in terms of modeling, it is best log loss. Uh, the person with the best log loss at the end of the night gets 30 points. 
Second best will get 10, third best will get 5. And of course, last but not least, chat can award uh, a total of 15 points. And so y'all in chat, um, at the end of the night, at 11pm, you can vote for your favorite contestant tonight. And uh, the person who gets the most votes will get 10 points. Second place in the voting contest will get 5. All right, so we are at nine o'clock Eastern. So I've just let our contestants know that they can begin coding. So that is right. And do we want to just kick off that prediction already, yeah. Meg? Yeah. Let's do it. So this is our prediction that we kick off at the start of every night, which is, uh, will we see one of our contestants night tonight make a submission to the leaderboard before uh, 9 30 p.m eastern so that's a yes or no will a contestant submit before 9 30 p.m i'll kick that off now so you've got two points to wager make your wager let us know what you think it's kind of gone both ways hasn't it nick it, you know some some people have gone all in on one answer and it's been absolutely the other one some people have you know 50 50 it's it's really been pretty pretty wild in terms of the voting from chat in terms of how it goes for the contestants it has been uh you know a, a mix of whether or not they get it in the first 30 minutes but we are actually looking at the person who might be doing that <gasps> most consistently uh and ethan is dabbling in some nlp tonight it looks like uh let's take a look at d rob's screen and uh on d rob's screen uh we're already taking a look at uh, some meme game from D Rob here, uh, so <laughs> um, he, uh, it looks like he is working off his laptop. Uh, usually, he'd be on his desktop where he has the you know the full power of uh, whatever D Rob has uh, on his MacBook at, or on his uh, uh, his twenty fifteen. Like that's like he's oh, that, very strong. He's very right. opinionated about yeah. The, his particular that's right so yeah exactly he, he is working with four cores tonight we'll see uh if he has to make some uh uh, uh what do you call it when you have to meet in the middle compromises he has to make some compromises yes. Yes. with his modeling techniques <gasps> that's right that's um, right let's go yeah. to julia silgi and she's already diving into data viz uh plotting right. the price range and uh she is ex seeing exactly what me and the QA checkers uh, were trying to figure out what to do with these date, uh, with these price ranges. We wanted like to try to... Are well, they even? Or, yeah, exactly. How did you, how did you, yeah. We tried to make it uh, somewhat even, you know? We didn't want to go all out and make it super, super unbalanced. There's still unbalance in there. Uh, but yeah. you're seeing, uh, you know, up to twenty five or up to $250,000 for the uh, lowest range and over $650,000 for the highest range and everything else falling between that quarter of a million up to uh 650 or er, dollars for a house in austin and this is specific y'all pretty narrow range it I, is i mean i don't know that much about houses i've never yeah house, can but... you can you imagine buying a i house? live in la so yeah <laughs> can you imagine buying a house <laughs> no no <laughs> it wouldn't be yeah a house yeah, as so much as a shack in, in LA for those prices, but yeah. <laughs> Meg, I'm begging you to put in missing data next time. Um, you know, is that is that that is, that is, is what Ethan has that to say? Is what so... Ethan, that is what Ethan has. Right <laughs> yeah. Here. So that's a callback to that must have been the uh, bird strikes data set that I think um, both Ethan and Julia uh, played with in the first first lap of the regular season. Had a lot of missing data. After that, he decided to you know. Uh, brush up on imputation and other ways of handling missing data. Apparently he spent a lot of time on that because I've gotten a lot of shit for, <laughs> for, for not including more data sets uh, with missing values since then. You know, I will say, um, you know, the two people who have s started strong off the, off the bat with NLP focused uh, pre-processing are not the two people I thought would. Uh, we have Landon uh, working with some count vectorization. It looks like he's running uh, some sort of TFIDF stuff. And we also see Ethan here also working with some TFIDF, trying to uh, 
get as much out of that uh, that description column as possible. Uh, but uh, don't look now. But we do see Julia already plotting heavily. Latitude, longitude by price range. This is those. Uh, this is the target that they're looking for tonight. The bins of prices. Uh, so we do see uh, some nice data viz here. Uh, anyone from Austin? Any people from Austin in in chat? Any uh, Austiners? That look. Uh... Austin's. Yeah, does that look? Um, it, mm -hmm. It's so close to the golden feature, though, Meg. If it, if it... it, yeah, I mean, she's got to tweak a few things. Um, she could kind of look at different different ways of hewing the same plot. And if she if she ends up looking looking at um, the year built as hew, then e that's easy to have first ten points. Um, Nick, I wanted to remind you though. Mm -hmm. In ten minutes, we're going to be doing our first contestant live look-in with is, Ethan. That is right. I'm really excited about uh, some live look-ins. <laughs> so hopefully, chat, I hope you all are super excited about, uh, you know, always trying to change it up here on Slice week to week, and uh, we're going to try uh, something new tonight, uh, something a little special. Uh, we're going to do some live interviews with contestants while they're coding, so uh, rather than playing y'all uh, uh, their intro videos, We'll uh, we'll have them. We'll have a little discussion with our folks tonight. Uh, but here we are with Julia going to the Drake meme. Uh, she did shout out uh, uh, D Rob's meme ability, uh, and this was one of D Rob's more uh, famous memes from the other yes. night. <laughs> um, so so excited to see how Julia fares in the meme game. Going I like how they're like they're didactic. Like, this is educational. This is an educational meme, right? <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> oh god, she was so close. I, I it's just a hex plot version. It's not a scatter plot version. But she's using uh a, is this Viridus? Is that the is that the uh Yes it is. Uh, vir, vir, virid Viridus. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, I would say so. That works for me. Viridus? Chat. Yeah. Chat. Any pronouncers in chat? Um, any pronouncers? <laughs> any pronouncers in chat? Uh, D Rob's here, and he's already looking at uh, the different home types and the different uh, mean uh, bins from. And remember, this is bins, price bins. It's not predicting precisely the price of a house. Uh, and we do see D Rob. This is by house type. Now, if he takes this one step further and facets by city. That's 10 points that he could be getting. Back to Ethan here, and Ethan we'll be talking to in uh, a little less than six minutes from now. Um, already diving into a cat boost model, and uh, you know, how how much can we really say about how Ethan has just gone full, full send into yes. the cat boost universe, Meg? Yeah, he really has. I mean, we saw the introduction of cat boost, I think, and was that episode one? It was. Season it's one with Kanzi, yeah, and um, yeah, something about it just really clicked with Ethan, and here we are today in the semifinals. Man, um, we should do we should we add, like we should think of some questions to ask Ethan. And I'd love to hear if Chat has any any thoughts on what you'd be curious to ask Ethan about how he's feeling about the data set, the challenge tonight, any plans he has uh, for uh, his approach in tonight's episode let you know, us know in chat you know my questions to ethan are absolutely going to be about text analysis oh, yes 100 percent. you're up against the people who wrote the tidy text library uh david robinson julia silgi um but he came out really confidently um planning to work with uh some text data so We'll uh, he seems unfazed so far, but we will have an opportunity to check in with him momentarily. Very, very soon. Let's go to Landon, and Landon is doing a word check. He is, you know, Land you could tell that Landon learned how to code from someone who learned, uh, like, Python 2 to start with. And then he's writing a lot of things that you would typically see in, like, a little more Pythonic or more traditional... Uh, uh, a Python learning environments, uh, and uh, you know, here he is going into his text analysis as well, cleaning up some of his uh, different things. Now, Landon 
is from Texas. So do you think he, uh, you know, I was looking at his markdown, his notes before he was starting, and he said that maybe uh, uh, he might try to do something like locale towards Lake Travis. Uh, do you think oh. stuff like that might help Landon have a little more advantage here since he has a lot of knowledge about Texas and particularly Austin? I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, what he may need, what other contestants may need is probably in the data set itself. I wonder if it may be a little bit of a rabbit hole to to do that. Um, just a little bit too much kind of like leaning on domain knowledge in this case. I wonder if it's sort of like a, a confidence thing, like it kind of helps to maybe like validate some assumptions or check some assumptions about the data initially. But um, yeah, I would I would suspect um, he probably has everything he needs needs uh, in the data set itself. Back to Julia Silgi, and she is. Uh, working on her multi-class model train test splitting right now. She has this really pretty looking uh, hex bin plot, mean price over latitude and longitude uh, across uh, Austin. And if you're interested in playing along with our contestants, exclamation data will get you that data set. And uh, right now, if you want to also wager on whether or not uh, the contestants will have a prediction within the uh, before 9:30. At the top over here in chat, uh, there's a little prediction area. Oh, actually, I think the predictions are probably already in at this point. So yeah, the predictions would be in, but uh, we can all like sit on the Kaga leaderboard and just refresh and see, you know, who's making submissions. So that is right. Uh, and uh, let us take a look to see if there are any submissions in the Kaga leaderboard quite yet. And we do have one, uh, just some SVM. Uh, our friend Data Lab. Uh, and uh, just some SVM in there for uh, one prediction, but uh, I'm sure we'll see many more as we get going. And we do see a little note in Julia's notebook here. I went to grad school in Austin. And I'm very familiar with the East-West dynamic. Mm. So uh, mm. perhaps Landon's Texas knowledge may be neutralized by other folks who have been in the Texas region. Perhaps, who knows, maybe, we'll see. See a meme get uh, happening here? <laughs> yes. Well, the evil Kermit meme. We'll come back to Julia in a minute here. We'll go back to D-Rob, and D-Rob looks like he's already working on his XG boost modeling, and he is uh, going to be grid searching through this. He does have this facet by a uh, house type, uh, by price range. I wonder if D-Rob is feeling the pressure, not just up against one, but two uh, modelers who have beat him in previous yeah. previous iterations of sliced i wonder if he's feeling like uh this is his, this is his time to shine that is a, a question we can put a pin in and ask him you know when we uh hop in for his live q a that is right uh here we are with <laughs> you know i love oh, man i love the idea you know this is this happened last week when julia was uh came out with a blog post about uh the, the baseball data set that everyone was working on and how she was working on how to use early stopping in a model train. Yeah. I do think she does a lot of this stuff to, to sort of set the, the layers for her next content creation to come out there. Exactly. And I, and, uh, uh, I do appreciate some of these uh, memes that I'm sure we'll see in a blog post soon enough, you know? Yeah. I think we've also got, I'm sorry, we got to hop to uh, Dave's, D, uh, D Rob's screen right now for a really great meme as well <laughs> yeah uh incredible landon submitting his third model me working on my first this is this is <laughs> gonna this is exactly what's gonna happen this is exactly very this... astute observation in this meme um yeah. any questions y'all want to ask um ethan before we go live to them chat any uh any questions for ethan chat before uh, we go, uh, remember Ethan's background. Uh, he works as a data analyst for The Athletic. And uh, before he was working for The Athletic, he was a big blogger uh, for the Arrowhead Analytics fandom. This is uh, Kansas City Chiefs fans. Uh, he dives into a lot of the analytics behind uh, how the Chiefs are doing and has made his way over to the athletic and is doing data anal analytics for them. Um, <laughs> uh, 
we we will surely do that. We'll surely do that, Jordan. We will surely <laughs> do that. And Ghetto Bob, we will we will just for y'all, just for y'all. Uh, and here we are with uh, Julia. Going back to Julia now. I feel like my my uh, my scene transitions tonight have not been uh, 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 excel as excellent as they have been in previous weeks. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are well, you are you agreeing that that's? The case? I, don't, I don't even know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a scene transition expert. I just remember suddenly David. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which maybe wasn't excellent, but it was funny. Um, so we're at quarter past. Should I let Ethan know that yeah. we're gonna check in on him? So I'm just gonna ask Ethan to come off of mute and undeafen so that he can hear us. Cool. Hey Ethan, how's it going? Oh, it's going. Yeah, we are 15 minutes in. How are you feeling? How are you, you feeling know, about the data set, the challenge? Data set looks good. I wish you had missing labels in it, or missing data. Makes yeah, it we more caught fun. that comment. <laughs> sorry, not it's sorry, is what I'm supposed to say. So. Um, no worries. Yeah. It turns out I don't know how to figure out which class is which. That Does seems important. Model? That, that seems important. important. So oh, one of the questions Nick and I are just dying to ask you is uh, this this data set does have some text data that you could be working with. And we saw you kind of like out the gate pretty early. Take a look at that. And um, we're just wondering how you're feeling up against um, the likes of Julia Silgi and D-Rob, authors of the Tidy Text Library. Um, and you know, the nice thing is I know so little about text mining and, and like feature extraction of text that I didn't even know that they were good at that. Um, oh, well. Until like I started sliced and then I learned who they are. But I don't really know what I don't know there. I'm just going to do some TF IDF, which I found through a quick Google search and play around with a little bit. Um, cool. And add some quote unquote success with it, some practice. So I'm going to do that right now, actually. Uh, start implementing that. So hopefully Very that good. How do you? Yeah, we are excited to see that. How do you? Uh... Uh, a few questions from chat, just some lightning round questions here, Ethan. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite animal? Oh, God. Uh, a hawk. <laughs> okay, any reason? Uh, I think birds of prey are very cool. Bir okay, uh, yes. The, the yeah. raptor, raptors of the sky. Uh, what, is your, what is your biggest fear? Oh, uh, I don't know, global warming. Oh, well, that is, okay, yeah, that, that yeah. is a very big fear of... I hope everyone. Um, what place do you think you're going to get tonight? First. There you oh go. yeah, I like that attitude. Do you, do you are you, do you always do you always feel like when you come into a competition, you're like if you're not in it to win it, like what are you doing there? No, uh, not necessarily. I think like especially even when I joined this competition, I would have had no problem getting last place. Um, but I certainly try to win in every competition I put in the time to sharpen my skills um, to hopefully do that. So for me, the goal is always, primary goal is always to win, but I think it's certainly okay to do be your, your goal. And uh, one more question from chat. Uh, why does Tom Brady own the Chiefs? I'm sorry, you're cutting out there, Nick? I think I'm gonna have to... <laughs> I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> I appreciate the time, Ethan. Uh, good luck tonight. Appreciate well, it. Good luck, Ethan. Um, Ethan Douglas, y'all. And uh, remember, if y'all want to ask the other contestants questions, feel free to post them in chat, and we'll log as many as we can. Uh, do you feel like Ethan's in a good, confident place right now with uh, the, what he's doing, how he's doing it? Do you feel like he has like a strong methodology behind? Behind how to get some points here tonight? Um, I think he has a methodology, and honestly, I think that counts for a lot. <laughs> you know, like he knows he's got a plan. Like even if it is like, oh, I just googled this thing last week, um, and I just learned about you know this thing the other day, and I'm gonna try it out. You know, he whatever. He he sounded cool and like collected, um, which I have to say, it's kind of it's kind of neat to be able to like hear, like and kind of get like a sense of their like 
how they're feeling. Like we were speaking with him and see him like still writing code and like scrolling as he's talking to us. So he seems like he seems like he's in a good, pretty good, pretty good sp space right now. Yeah. So and having uh, uh, more, uh, you know, all four of these contestants have played the same amount of sliced shows, uh, but this is more than any sliced contestant because this is the semifinals. The last four contestants, two of them. Going to the finals. What do they have at stake, Meg? What do you uh what do, what, what do, do they have? Yeah, at... what, like what what what's uh what what is the winner of sliced? Uh, the two contestants who win tonight, uh what do they yeah. move on to have an opportunity to win? <laughs> well, uh yeah, so we'll just have two contestants from tonight that we will uh, see compete again in next week's final and next week's championship. And the Sliced Championship will be the owner of a brand new Sliced Knife. Did you want me to show this off again, Nick? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're leading me towards? I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm teeing you up. I, I'm I just up. have to be really careful um, because it's extremely sharp. Um, like, is, how it, did I have this is it like super, super sharp? Is that... It's Oh yeah, it's incredibly sharp. Yeah, I mean, do you think I could like live cut stuff on live TV? Like, like a... Like a piece like, of paper or something? Like one of the these things, like, you know, like, I don't know. I don't want to, like, um, I don't yeah, just, the chat to have to call 911 <laughs> for me. And let's, uh, let's just see that, uh, see, uh, the custom knife, the custom job we, we put on it. Can I, like, should I cut a can of LaCroix? Like, is that, <laughs> it seems really dangerous. <sighs> Um, I'm gonna be. We're gonna be like in some like um, Twitch Reddit's if I like chop off my fingers on your stream. That, that would truly um, be some live stream fail. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> will the slice insurance cover any of the stunts? Yeah. So the the knife is engraved with the sliced logo. Um, and after we find out who the sliced winner is next week, it will also be engraved with their name. So. Their name and season one of Sliced. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that is what's at stake. I tried to like come up with some like steak knife pun. <laughs> I don't know if you can think of one. Somebody come up with the, like a knife knife puns steak. Yeah, yeah. Afton, uh, yeah. come up with some knife puns. Uh, here we are. You know, it's... Again, I'm saying Lacroix on. Uh, on, on chat and everybody debates how to pronounce it. Uh, this happens to me every time. <laughs> you know, um, it's so interesting to see that the two people who uh, are text people go straight to modeling and the two people who are the modeling people go straight to text. <laughs> right. Uh, here we are, Julia Silgi with her grid search of an XG Boost model. Um, actually, is this an XG Boost model or is this a... Uh... Yeah, I'm unsure. But uh, whatever her model is here, she's already diving into the modeling. Uh, here we are with D-Rob, and D-Rob looks like uh, he's listing out his plots. Uh, and he has uh, the story so far location. And uh, spa is unimportant. Garage space is lower. Bathrooms wind up more important than bedrooms. Perhaps just correlated. Mm -hmm. And remember, he is using a gradient boosted tree model. Uh, so depending on his tuning, uh, parameters it might just be that bathrooms end up being more important depending on his uh uh per hyper parameter tuning uh uh sp specifications uh it might just be that bathrooms end up squeezing out a little more juice than bedrooms um so there's d rob who's threw into uh some some or er, threw into his modeling his initial model and i did see on ethan's screen uh, really briefly, but uh, he was taking a look at the Kaggle leaderboard. Uh, he has he did not put anything up there yet, but uh, if he does end up submitting something soon, he would be the third person to submit something up there, and he would also earn everyone in chat who voted yes uh, a lot right. of chat or er, a lot of chat points. That's so. right. So in six minutes, I want to give chat a heads up. In six minutes is when we'll be doing a check-in with Julia, Julia Silgi. So if folks have questions for Julia, let us know. If you want to know what her greatest fears are and what her favorite animal is. That's Nick, what do you want to ask Julia? 
Um, I want to ask her if uh, she's headed towards modeling uh, first uh, because she's so comfortable with text analysis already. Yeah, she's like just maybe saving that for the end where she can just like go ham. Um, I want to ask her a little bit about like, um, yeah, whether, um, or yeah, just like what she knows about the data set already, which she can tell us. It sounds like she, yeah, she already had sort of like some thoughts on that. Um, kind of curious to ask her that as a, as somebody who's lived in, in Austin, um, which is actually where I, the only time that I have met Julia Sylvie in person was we were both in Austin together. So did you, it feels, was, it feels very appropriate. Was it the conference or something? It was a Stack Overflow company meetup. Ah. Yeah. D Rob looks like he might be spinning out a little. I'll check on his stream in a second. But uh, uh, Julia Silly also with a feature importance plot here. Uh, she also finds number of bathrooms over number of bedrooms. Uh, and also latitude, longitude being very important. Uh, and uh, garage space being more important than some of these other features that perhaps don't have a lot of importance. And uh, Julia already rooting for herself, domain knowledge being uh, being something she's coming in here with. Uh, love to see I was it. Skeptical. I was so skeptical when you asked me if you thought that might be a factor for Landon, but uh, Julia at least thinks that it may be. <laughs> yes. It's wow, funny. Uh, you, know, I, you know, as a linguist, Meg, do you believe? Yeah. Do you believe that domain knowledge actually helps with that linguistic uh, text mining, text analysis process? Uh, and if so, do you think like maybe there's some advantage for the folks who have domain knowledge about Texas and Austin? Ooh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it would come down to doing maybe doing some really like very specialized kind of keyword stuff. Like if you knew that, um, I don't know, there's. I'm just thinking of like weird features that houses in Austin may only have. You know how there's like sort of like some regional kind of like sp specificities to how houses are built. If there's something like that for Austin, I well, the specific example I'm thinking of is like uh, I forget what it's called, but I lived in Wisconsin, and the whole like just a random toilet in the basement, like in an unfinished basement, and like a like a shower and a toilet, like that's a that's a feature of like houses in like wisconsin there's a name for it somebody will weird, somebody will uh, weird bathrooms grandfather's toilet is that really what it's called yeah oh it's not i don't know it's not there's a name bathrooms. for like just like a it's weird yeah i mean it's creepy right it's like an unfinished basement and there's just like a toilet yeah. <laughs> it's for toilet, it's it's for is, toilet. That is that a is that really what it's called and this is wisconsin am i i mean i also lived in pittsburgh so i could be mistaking it um is, but if there's a kind of thing like yeah yeah, it's a real thing, yeah. <laughs> D-Rob with another meme, memeing himself uh, with some of his modeling, <laughs> modeling recipes. Uh, so <laughs> this one is so technically specific. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't even read what it says. It's a little too fuzzy yeah, for me. We'll have we'll have to get it from the Twitter. Remember, dear all, exclamation slice if you want to follow all of our contestants on Twitter. I do recommend it. I do recommend Word. it. And also, on top of following them, uh, if you do have Twitter or any social media, uh, you know, I, I very rarely ask for y'all to help us out, promote the stream, but we only have two episodes left. Tonight, the semifinals, next week, the finals. Uh, scream it from the rooftops, y'all. Uh, uh, let them all know. That... Hey, there's something at stake uh, if you do do that on Twitter. <laughs> um, yeah. We are, yeah, we have uh, the Z by HP hashtag giveaway that we're doing for one more week so if you use the sliced hashtag on twitter you uh will be like automatically entered into our random drawing where the winner will get a uh, hp omen omen gaming bundle um so yeah that uh that could be yours we did a giveaway we did a giveaway last week i believe um so we had uh Michael Malarkey was our winner from last week, August 3rd. And so we're doing our next winner selection next week during the final. All you have to do is use the sliced hashtag. That is right. So tell all your friends. Let's uh, let's have a really good time tonight and a great time also next week, y'all. 
Um, All right, we are one minute away from checking in with Julia, so chat, let us know what your questions were. Yeah, any questions? Any questions from Julia, y'all? I think we had one question from chat, which was uh, to ask, what is your favorite moments from Sliced so far? Um, which I think was one of our actually our pre-show Q&A questions, so. <laughs> Here with D-Rob, uh, and D-Rob looking like uh, saving a plot there. Uh, he still is like really into this uh, home type feature. Uh, I wonder if he is going to try to uh, maybe uh, tokenize or, or coin that out somehow um, and use it uh, uh, as more than just the raw feature that, that we see in the data set right now. All right, I'm going to let Julia know uh, she can unmute and undefin so when she does that we can ask her a couple of questions. Uh, no one, by the way, uh, by the looks of things, no one, none of our contestants, have submitted Okay. Oh, so that means our prediction is no. Hi, Julia. How are you? Hello. I'm doing pretty good. I'm just about to submit. Whoa. Oh. I'm doing awesome. it right now. So let me remind myself what metrics I was expecting to get so I can put it in the little um, submission-y thing to remind myself when I go get back to the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. So well, I, think I, I guess I think I've got it up there. All right. I did it. I got it submitted. Ooh, awesome. How does that I'm, I'm, I've always been curious to ask, like, how does it feel making your first submission? Like, especially in the first, you know, 30 minutes or so of the show. Um, so so for me, I think that first submission I usually know is not or I hope will not be the best one that I do, but yeah. um, it's definitely, um, you know, if like, if I don't know if you're looking at my screen right now, but like all this kind of business that I'm doing here, I'm like, okay, I mm -hmm. have to, is, is my music still going? Can you hear it? No. Nope. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so this kind of, you know, all this sort of munging that um, I need to be able to basically then just copy and paste whenever I get another fitted model done. Yeah. Um, so that first that first submission is usually about for me is like, OK, what do I need to how do I need to uh, munge and rearrange um, the input and the output of the model? And, you know, for a multi class model it's different than if you have a um, you know, you're predicting a number and different kinds of modeling frameworks, you know, output different kinds of things. You have to be able to, you know, deal, deal with all that and get it in the format that um, that you can um, that you need. So for, I think for that first model, my goal is typically um, so my goal is typically to finish one. Yep. <laughs> my, goal, <laughs> my, goal, my, my goal is typically to get out <laughs> some variable importance um, so that I can understand like what are going to be some of the most important sure. things and and then also just to get the like the mechanics out so that I can have some confidence that it will I'll be a, you know a lot faster later when I get other models done. Um, right. Question from chat Julia how has your uh strategy for slice change from the first episode to here in the semi playoffs for some uh, yeah yeah so i think when the first in the first um episode that i was in um the points the way the points were assigned felt so like um uh you know like you you have to win the modeling or that's it and also i will here admit publicly that <laughs> <laughs> I have a little bit of some confusion about um, the mechanics of how this is all going to work. And so I thought I didn't actually know that I was, there was going to be like, I didn't, I must not have read something clearly or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I was like, okay, I will go. I will do my best at like winning the modeling. And I did kind of think, oh, if I don't win, then I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't actually, I didn't realize that there was going to be like another round and all this stuff. So I really, that first episode, I was like, okay, I'm just going to really concentrate on building the best model I can. Um, and since then, I feel like I've gotten a better understanding of, um, uh, you know, of the, of the, how the show works, how the show works. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. And, and you know what? Like I, I am someone who takes a more, like I am a bit of a well, more of like a, um, 
whole holistic person when it comes yeah. to even to modeling or data science, you know, so I'm not, I'm, 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 and this, this is true in so many things in my career and life in general. It's like, I am, um, I, I definitely am someone who goes for breadth and not yeah. necessarily like being this world super expert at one thing. Um, and, and to be honest, that has served me really well in my career and in, in most, in, um, and my and my life as well in general. So um, so I guess my strategy has definitely changed to I want to um, uh, uh, be able to invest time in exploring a data set um, thoroughly along many kinds of axes versus really trying to um, win the model only. I, I definitely want to build a, mm -hmm. a you know a well performing model, but not just do that. And uh, yeah. inquiring minds want to know there is a pretty large uh, description column with tons of text. Uh, you being uh, one of the tidy text writers and maintainers, um, uh, how do you feel about seeing a ton of text to play with tonight? That's super exciting. I definitely hope to a plan to get to that. So I um, either either for um, visualization and exploratory work or to incorporate into the model. So um, I was going to do this and then I was going to maybe my sort of next thing I was going to try was um, uh, converting because I think you, you probably saw like I made a plot where I converted the bins to numbers to be able to, um, um, you know, like be able to deal with it on a numeric scale and like yeah. what what ends up working better in terms of um, uh, getting a modeling result. And so I was going to maybe try to set up a model to do that and bin afterwards. And then um, and then that would be probably the next thing I do is uh, try to incorporate a bit of that text information into the model. All right. Well, we'll let you have uh, have at it, Julia. Thanks for. Uh... Uh, joining us for the interview. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Good luck. Julia Silgi, y'all. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, from Julia's, while Julia was doing that, uh, we did see some maps being plotted here from D Rob. Uh, he has uh, what I believe is um, uh, uh, an open street map of Austin that he's overlaying some sort of quantity or size kind of uh, scatter plots over. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll take a look at that when it comes back here. But uh, what do you think about uh, how how Julia's feeling? And uh, did that sound any different than how you uh, typically heard from Julia before when you were working with her or how you know her as a friend? <laughs> um... No, I think it's a it's a, about what I expected, and it's I think something that we've commented on in past episodes. How Julia's approach is really, really broad and is very well rounded, and you know just does every aspect of you know what a data scientist does really, really solidly. Um, and I yeah, so I think that's uh, the fact that you know I think she was able to settle on that as her strategy, and you know the playoffs and the semifinals today after <laughs> you know. Um, the realizing that, you know, it's not all in on modeling. I think she's really in a kind of like really comfortable, comfortable zone, uh, with sliced now. Um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, people in chat saying they're digging the alive interviews and I'm very extremely happy to hear that. So thanks. I'm Jeff. very pleased too. So here we go. Here's the, the, uh, open street map or, or whatever. Yeah, a percent above 450K, he does have an open map view of this. And uh, for you Austinites, or is it Austiners or uh, Austens? Austonians. Austonians, you know. Austin. Uh, does, does this, uh, how, how does this look? You know, domain experts out there, does this look all right? Um, you know, the thing that I always get scared about, is, I, I don't know why, because it's latitude longitude, you know? It, yeah. Like, uh, I always get scared that the latitude and longitude is wrong. And I feel like I'm going to be plotting on like a map that doesn't act Are you like, be like in Venezuela yeah, or something you know, or, yeah. or the ocean or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. And I just always get scared. Well, it can't be scarier than uh, Dr. Michael Malarkey's clover field plot. <laughs> uh, a literal black episode. circle yeah, over New York. Larger, and larger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. 
Austinites, I think is what we're saying. Austinites, okay, okay. Like Austies too, that's good. Austies, oh yeah, that is cute. That is cute. Meg, how are you feeling right now? How, how, do you, how are you feeling about the, the energy tonight? I feel good. I really like, I also like the live look-ins because like, I mean, we do this every week and we do just like endless speculation about, you know, why are they doing that? How are they feeling about that? They just saw, you know, D-Rob just saw Landon's name go up on the leaderboard above his, like all of those things. We always wonder how they feel. So it's, it's pretty cool to be able to check in and, you know, get a read, get a feel. Um, I am like blown away that they both Ethan and Julia sound calm because I would a million percent not be calm in their, in their shoes uh, behind their keyboard. So um, yeah, kudos to them. But I think that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, so. I did I like have to cut. Energy. I did have. I felt like I did have to cut that interview short because I feel like five minutes is probably the max time. Don't want to take too much time. Yeah, we've got Landon coming up next. So, folks, in five minutes, we'll be talking to to Landon. Um, we want to ask him some questions that um, maybe there's something we can feed to to D Rob, his his uh, friendly rival. Our last interview of the night. Um, but if folks have a question for Landon in chat, let us know got five minutes um there won't be another check-in uh it, it's just these interviews for tonight uh you know uh slow and steady wins the race but i'm really happy that everyone is uh really enjoying the live look in so i much appreciated for the feedback and if you're interested in providing more feedback by the way y'all exclamation yeah. feedback gets you to the feedback page and if you love sliced if you've been enjoying every week uh from so long ago 10 weeks ago to now um, if you want to huh. help contribute to the next best iteration of Slice, feel free to give us some feedback, exclamation feedback, to, uh, to get some messages to me and Meg about how we can make your Slice experience even yeah. better. Really appreciate the feedback so far, uh, from everyone. Um, so I just remember that we, we, um, got a little distracted by our interview with Julia, but we did have an outcome for the leaderboard. And I think perhaps because we interrupted Julia, uh, um, she was just, just past our cutoff of uh, submitting uh, before 9.30 p.m. So she actually submitted at, uh, I think I'm seeing 9.30 and 57 seconds. That is what I'm seeing, too. Um, so just a little too late. So our outcome is actually no, which is... Um, uh, 87% of the chat points wagered uh, were no. So, y'all were right. Okay. Way to, way to go, chat. Way to go. Good job. Yeah, yeah. we rigged it. And that was intentional. It's so rigged. Uh, did we see D Rob make a submission just now, too? We just saw D Rob put his, uh, his submissions up there. And right now, uh, by the looks of things, um, depending on how much you want to weigh the public leaderboard, remember, uh, there's actually. Uh, fewer rows in this particular uh, data set and the in the test set than there have been in other previous weeks. So uh, mix-ups abound tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but we do see, as it stands, uh, D-Rob with a 0.86 log loss, followed by Ethan with a 0.876. Uh, Julia's in there with a 0.93, and we have yet to see Landon. But as we know, Meg, Landon is sometimes... Oh, Sometimes late to the party. Late to the party, but he's still... He's, it work, whatever he does, it works for him. But, uh, yeah. Um, I can't wait to ask him a little bit about his uh, computer situation in a couple of minutes when we do our check-in with uh, with Landon. That's right. Uh, he is currently freaking out because he cannot load this Plotly uh, access, uh, and that is uh, because he apparently doesn't have uh, the file somewhere. I'm guessing mm. he's trying to pull uh, this from from a. Uh, it looked like it is trying to pull from some sort of local, and I think he really wants to actually pull from a URL, but he has yet to make that move. So a little tantrum with the uh, cursor movements there from Landon, but uh, like he does have cursor tantrum. <laughs> cursor tantrums. He does have two notebooks open. One for the tune that he's currently uh, stopped and ended for some reason, and another for the notebook. And uh, that is something that is also new in this past season, Meg. Uh, we've seen a lot more people opening up s two sessions or two notebooks, one for data yep. viz, one for modeling. How do you feel about it? Um, I mean, I think it's something, 
you know, that many of our contestants have converged on for a reason. Yeah, I think, uh, like, I think it makes a lot more sense than who was our contestant that was using both R and Python? That was Adrian. That was, that was, I'm not surprised we don't see that. <laughs> um, even though, like, you know, our contestant, you know, Ethan tonight, he is actually also an R user. He is an um, R Python split user yeah. as well. Python, so, and we have, we saw a tableau from uh, NS Champs Kyle. Um, so, is, is that, that's right, right? Yeah. That is right, NS Champs Kyle. So, but uh, yeah, I think the the two sessions for uh, Model Train and then Data Viz does end up, you know, making a lot of sense, so. Um, it looks like Ethan was trying to get some Euclidean distance or some sort of a uh, geospatial uh, features coming from a different package, but um, perhaps he is leaving that right now. You do see, uh, well, actually you don't see because my big old face is covering it, but uh, his current crossfold validation is giving him a 0.902, uh, even though he is on the leaderboard currently sitting at a 0.876. So again, uh, depending on how you how much you weigh your process versus the public leaderboard tonight is truly up to you. But uh, I believe there's only, um, I believe there's only like uh, 4,000 rows in the tr test set. Small, small and, data set. Yeah. yeah. So if we're talking 1%, that's 40 houses you have to, you know, that they're being judged on. Uh, and they have another 3,800 3, plus to go. So um, here's Julia Silgi with a meme. That's a good one. That's <laughs> <laughs> totally wrong. Yeah, getting your evaluation metric right is pretty important. Pretty That's, important. You know, it's funny because um, it's, um, you know, when we do think about house prices, you typically do want to think about things in more of a RMSE or a, a linear scale. But uh, uh, we binned it, and I, I'm wondering, like, how do you feel about, like, binning houses in this way? Like, do you think about, like, houses in particular uh I don't know brackets like oh like this house right. is like the the like a level one house for me but a level two right. house would be in this bracket like do these buckets really correspond to true clusters or some sort of like qualitative separation yeah um i i don't know i'd have to i'd have to do some eda nick <laughs> <laughs> Might have to ask my Maybe. friends. So this own... is the big mansion like bra bracket. This is the real mansion bracket. Yeah, um, <laughs> we should do our look in with Landon. Do you mind if I, I ping Landon let's, and let's see bring him he's... in? Let's bring him in. Cool. We will see when he sees my message. He will. D Rob coming Hopefully. out with uh, strong with another meme. What a classic. Hello? Landon. Hello, Landon. Welcome. Hey, how are y'all? Good. How's uh, how's it going with a new rig right now? I'm um, currently on my brother's computer because uh, so y'all know that one time I like I had Game Boy level connection. That's because the mm -hmm. PC I'm using uses like a Wi-Fi adapter on it, so uh -huh. my brother's is plugged up through Ethernet, so it's just better for streaming. And last time I was at Starbucks, and I really don't want to be at Starbucks today. So, <laughs> word, word. And how's how's it going so far? Um, I think First modeling's going minutes. all right. Yep. Um, like I'm waiting for this to train. This initially just comparing this fivefold CV performance to the leaderboard. We'll see how this matches up in terms of actually on the private or on the public test right. set. But uh, yeah. So I'm yeah. working with right here. <laughs> do you cool? Do, do you feel that um, you know we were we were noticing in your pregame there that you were checking out maps, you were doing a little analysis about perhaps uh, Lake Travis. Do you feel like you might have an advantage knowing a little more about Texas than your opponents? Um, well, we'll see how the um, like chat values are for these once I'm done training. That'll maybe give me some insight to how useful these are, but it's only like to like six features. Uh, if it doesn't really give me much performance, I'll probably just drop them off later on. But to answer your question, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like Very data uh, scientist of you, man. Very data scientist of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, these, I'm, all I know is houses on like Travis are very expensive. UT clearly is like, the main university in Austin, so like maybe like 
apartments near UT are like marked up for students and stuff and kind of same reasoning for all these things, but. And, um, uh, you know, just we've seen the rivalry develop over the course of the season. Uh, how are you feeling going head to head against D-Rob again? <laughs> uh, I hopefully, hopefully he's uh, memeing on me right now. <laughs> I'd like to see those again, um, but honestly, I'm just, I'm not really thinking about that. I'm just going in, going into it, trying to win. But we'll see yeah. how that goes. Do you like to check out the the memes that that D Rob throws at you after uh, yeah. the episode airs? Yeah, <laughs> I very much appreciated that last meme. <laughs> the Avengers meme. <laughs> That's great. That's and, great. And uh, you know, there there are there is another really strong coder who has won a lot of. Uh, modeling points in Ethan, do you feel that maybe Ethan is also uh, a factor in terms of uh, yeah. of uh, modeling points that you may or may not be getting? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of modeling, I'm uh, most scared of Ethan right now just because of his performance. I know he like did worked on like ensembling for a while and then like the last two times he's competed, he's won. So so you're Indeed. so you want to go on record to say that you're more afraid of Ethan than D-Rod? Well, I'm scared of them both, obviously. All, all I know is uh, Ethan's just been demonstrating some some good scores, like on the yep. private board every time. So, but uh, I do know D Rob's memeing, and he's got chat vote and uh, <laughs> viz visualization or meme visualizations and stuff. So, as y'all can see, I got a notebook going right here for viz, but we'll see how far I can get. I think I'm. I, I got some. Time. We, I I saw you uh, kind of tantrum shaking your your mouse cursor there when uh, something didn't get to load was that what was happening uh yeah so i'm currently trying to do some geographic visualization so like latitude longitude maybe like square footage you could see like where the big houses are or something just like off the bat but um i've never like used plotly to like zoom in to like a city so it's usually just like the entire united states so like map box right here i'm pretty sure you have to have an account so that's why i was like <laughs> Ain't got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is sliced. It, so, yeah. I see. I got a note here. Last. I see you, golden feature. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if that is the case. Landon, we'll let you go here, but good luck, and uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Good luck, Landon. All right. Thank y'all. I'll see y'all. Chat. Vote for me. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. I like it. I like it. Landon Buchner, everyone. Um, and it is true. If you want to vote for Landon at the end of the night, stick around till uh, the end of tonight where you have a chance to award your favorite contestant uh, uh, points that will help them advance to the finals. Let's go back over here to D Rob. Oh my god. Uh, we definitely have to tell D Rob that Landon is apparently more afraid of Ethan's modeling than than his so despite this rivalry that's built are you uh, are you seeing what i'm seeing here meg we've got a gg animate this is beautiful wonderful um so this is you know this is something that i've debated honestly as a golden feature um is doing some kind of like animation like create a gif or something um and i've kind of like shied away from the idea because I, I know it can be kind of intense depending on how much data you have to render a gif like this but yeah, we've got a, a, a smaller data set this time around, so apparently it lends itself well to a little animation here, looking at how, I guess... Houses like, over time? Yeah, how, like, price the price ranges have... Is it, like, the... Um, are we looking at, like, a, a median for each? No, we're not. It looks... I, I think it is just categorical, and then we are... Oh, it is. This is... Okay, it really is a small data set, so... Um, yeah, looks like maybe we're seeing, you know different neighborhoods becoming gentrified and more bougie or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. So this is the year built, right? Yeah. And I think uh, d Rob also doesn't think that that's exactly what he wanted to be plotting. Uh, oops, yeah. not what I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> we'll uh, see what he meant. Really interesting, creative plot. We haven't seen animated plots on Slice yet. Yet another uh, tool out of d Rob's very large toolbox. Let's go over here to Julia Silky. Uh, who it looks like she is, uh, again, dabbling with more feature engineering. It looks like she's uh, uh, just seeing if something might uh, have a little more um, uh, 
feature importance or signal for her model. Uh, perhaps uh, not exactly what she thought, and it looks like she was just trying to parse out home type uh, into their own features, perhaps one hot uh, encoding there. Let's go back over to Ethan, who we haven't heard from in a while, and Ethan looks like he's literally on that same cell that I yep. left him on. Yeah, it has been a while, but here we are. <laughs> Uh, Ethan does have a very methodical process about him, as you heard from his interview. Um, he uh, he does feel comfortable, it sounds like. And I would say, like, out of the three mag that we've talked mm -hmm. to so far, uh, I think I would say Landon would be the, the most kind of hyped up and maybe uh, nervous out of the I think so. Yeah. Three. I'm curious what chat thinks, because I got the same read that, you know, Landon is... Um, well, I guess maybe he wasn't, he didn't seem like super nervous per se, but um, like Julia's, she's done this a million times. Like she's live streamed, a, you know, an EDA and a model on a data set a bunch right. of different times, not necessarily a blind data set, uh, but she was, she was chill. And then, yeah, we heard from Ethan or yeah, we heard from Ethan and he was, he was totally fine. Like he sounded confident as well. So Coolia Silgi. Cool, yeah, Silgi, I dig it, yes. We are seeing, we saw some really nice uh, visually aesthetic uh, uh, facet plots here, descriptive plots here from Landon. Uh, if he scrolls down just a little more, we'll be able to take a look. Um, he is take, doing some uh, uh, summary statistics right now. Uh, we'll come back to his screen maybe if he scrolls down no he goes up he's going up okay. we'll come back. i saw it i did see like briefly it was like enormous too um Do and uh, with uh price ranges uh against uh longitude and latitude uh yes meg oh i was gonna say just uh you know obviously process of elimination d rob is the last contestant that will be doing a check-in with in about four minutes now so Chat, if you have more questions that you want us to ask D Rob, our final contestant of the night that we're checking in with, let us know. Oh, chat wants to know if Julia's wearing her lucky hat. Well, we can't ask D Rob that. I guess we could. We could ask. We could ask Dave that, but I'm not sure that he would know. Um, I'm curious to ask, Ju like, you know, David, how he feels, you know, competing against Julia as a uh, a former coworker, as a collaborator. You know, this is a really interesting plot here from D. Rob. Uh, he, we've seen him <laughs> cut up his data like this before. Uh, if anyone out there is familiar Ooh. with uh, the phishing data set, he did a phishing uh, uh, faceted plots by decade. Uh, we are yet again seeing another decade by decade plotting animation here, and like see, builds, yeah. And you can see at the top here the title uh, being decade from 1910 all the way to oh, wait. This is year built, Meg. Yeah, this is year built. So this is just showing where. But is houses that is this key. enough for the golden feature? Oh, oh wait. So the the golden feature is plot latitude and longitude x y and year built as the hue. Oh. So price range is the hue. So he's doing like he's using it as a dimension. Yes, he's using it as his time frame dimension. Yeah. Ah, uh, so close. V close. V close. <laughs> so close. Um, but I guess not enough. Still waiting on first golden features from contestants. Uh, we do see latitude, longitude, and uh, some sort of geo cluster. Interesting. I, I don't know what's what, geo cluster. I don't know what that is. It looks like he did use some sort of clustering algorithm to create labels uh we Ooh. do see d rob is animating this slightly differently now it looks like by uh years of five uh giving it a little more uh, uh you know growth along the way here this is very pretty i will say that it is it is pretty yes Austies, do you feel like uh this represents how your city has grown and expanded Go back over here to Julia Silgi, who's uh, doing early stopping with her uh, grid search parameter tuning. And uh, it does look like she has all sorts of different model metric information from these plots. If 
back over here to Ethan Douglas, who is looking at, you know, I get really scared when I see people diving in heavily into Doc's mag. Uh, no, yeah, because he did, you know, in his interview say, like, I'm going to use this thing that I just learned about. And he's been searching a lot of stuff with DB Scan. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, who am I to judge, though? I mean, these people, it's, these are the summer finalists. Like, they know what they're doing. <laughs> That's right. Um, in, less than a minute to go before we talk to uh, our last contestant tonight, uh, D Rob. Um, over here on D Rob's screen, he is working on this animate. Uh, I wonder if we're going to pull D Rob out of the flow tonight. I think that was going to happen regardless. Like, I think he's just in a constant state of flow. Um, <laughs> so. Right, writing the the coding flow through the the last eleven weeks. I um, I'm glad that he speaks really quickly because I feel like we have a lot of questions for D Rob. So I'm gonna ping him and ask him to unmute and undeafen. And we're gonna ask him if our you live have, Q and A. If you have questions for D Rob, uh, just post them in chat, and we'll try to get to them. Uh, as we can, if we have time. Can you, uh, Meg? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing great. Here we are. I just uh, set up the first animated map. You know, I've been waiting to do an animated map this whole uh, competition, so I'm excited to have the opportunity. You That's know, awesome. Yeah, we've been watching you develop it. Looks chat's, great. chat's loving it, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah, the, um, oh, I've, uh, I should really say year. I'm going to try, yeah, I'm just uh, messing with this a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, pardon me for, uh, well, so, so I'll tell you the big surprise, definitely the, the idea of having the, um, uh, categorical variable, the one that's ordinal definitely, um, was an interesting one to get around. Uh, I'm going to work on maybe some better color ranges to do this, but, um, and that's been the, um, the most exciting thing I see. Other than that, the features, I, I love that there's text data in there. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna pull that in uh, in a bit. And the um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm giving this a second to, to run in. And I ran into my the biggest hiccup so far has been that when I installed the magic package, it somehow broke mm -hmm. GG Animate. And when I uninstalled the magic package, it broke my approach to showing memes. So I'm gonna have to work oh, around that. Oh, oh wow, I'll, some live yeah. debugging that we'll be seeing yeah. on Sliced. Cool. Um, yeah. You mentioned that you're excited about the text column. I'm, I'm really curious to ask you, you know, we've got both you and Julia competing here tonight on Sliced. Um, how does it feel competing with, uh, you know, Julia Silvi as a former coworker, as collaborator on Tidy Text? Like, what's that vibe like? Oh, sure. I have a meme, I have a meme for that. Let's see if I can, if I can uh, pull <laughs> yeah. it open. Is the, um, answer your question in the uh, form, of, form of a meme. That's appropriate. I can answer your question in, in, in the form of a meme. Uh, the, uh, yeah, my take basically is it's rather intimidating to, to play against, uh, against Julia, uh, this is particularly from, from Narnia about, um, about cite, do not cite the deep magic to me, which, which well, actually turns out both the Julia and I were here when some of these tools were being developed, uh, the tools that I think we're going to be using on the, on the text data set. Um, yeah, it, it definitely, it's, um, it's exciting. I've always loved working with Julia. She and I wrote, um, uh, the initial draft of tidy models in two days at a, at a, a hackathon wow. in, um, in 2016 uh, and, and and about a year and a half later we, we published uh, an O'Reilly book on it um, Julia's just a terrific collaborator she's um, she fully ma has maintained the package I think I've, I've done almost nothing in the package in, in years um, so I'm sure she knows her way around it around the cool things you can do with it a lot more uh, but yeah I'm definitely excited to pull up, to pull apart some of the text data Awesome, very cool. Um, so the contestant that we checked in immediately before before speaking with you was Landon, yeah. and we asked him, you know, how are you feeling, you know, facing off against, you know, your friendly rival, D. Rob tonight, and he said, well, I'm actually most intimidated by Ethan. Um, <laughs> Ethan's modeling, you know, Ethan's done pretty well in past episodes yeah. as well. So curious your reaction to that and how you're feeling about the field tonight. I think they're both really tough. So I've got two. There, um, Ethan beat me. I, I believe Ethan beat me in in, in my, one of my pre-playoff. Um, or was it in the play the first round of the playoffs? Uh, I can't remember, but I know that um, that uh, he's beating me. I don't know if you saw. I had this scroll earlier on how do, how do I think they beat me? Um, yes. <laughs> and I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's definitely been. It's um. I think they're both really, uh, really sharp. Um, I've uh, I've been kind of, I've been neck and neck with them in a couple of times, but I, yeah, I think Ethan. No, I think it was the quarterfinals when when um, 
I think in particular that Ethan B. Mary Cap remember that for sure. Nope, that was Landon. It was it was in the the, the first session. They're both They're um, interchangeable, stuff. basically. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would I would not say that at all. I also um uh, I have I have one other meme which is about the um uh I've about, about some of my regrets on uh, uh I feel like I was very close with Landon in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna have the chance to try Cat Boost now, but but it's definitely been <laughs> been on my mind. Uh, yeah, I think it's just it's super exciting. These are the four people that remain. It's 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 um everybody's executing. I think at a really high level. I'm I'm excited about it. All right. Um, well, we'll let you go back at it. But uh, thanks for popping in and good luck tonight. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll catch up later. So yeah. Good luck. D Rob, y'all. Um. Here we are with Ethan, who it looks like he's still working with his geo clusters, and he has apparently seventy-five of them, which does not make sense since number of clusters is fifteen on his screen. Uh, we'll go back and see what's going on there later. Uh, here we are with Julia, who also has been memeing along this time. Model tuning versus two hours time availability, true and real. Uh, I'm gonna keep this. Hey, okay. no, go for it, Meg. No, that's. I'm just laughing. I'm just enjoying the memes. It's good. Yeah. I'm kicking off a, a poll here. Uh, who do you who do y'all in uh, chat think was most nervous? If you want to participate in the poll, um, over here in your chat window, or if you double click your mobile screen, your chat window will pop up, and you can drop down a little tab at the top uh, to vote. And remember, y'all, at the end of the night, 11 p.m., uh, uh, we will do a vote for who you think is doing the best here tonight. And uh, consider this a little practice. Consider this a little practice. Um, by the way, uh, thanks for, for all the love, y'all. Thanks for the bits from, a ton of bits from Sri. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks for all the subs, Neuro and Stats. And uh, my two of my favorite DC friends. I appreciate it, y'all. Aww. Uh, so... We're up to, it looks like we've got 14 people on the leaderboard. Uh, we don't see, I believe, Landon on the leaderboard yet. So we've got three of four of our contestants. Um, Nick, have we mentioned the the chat participation prizes that are at stake yet? We, at this point? we have not mentioned that. Oh, we haven't. Well, we've got, we've got an hour left of just, well, just under an hour left of Slice tonight. And... I know other folks who've watched in previous episodes know this, but uh, ooh, participate prizes! Yes, Afton, I, I dig it. Um, if you watched previous episodes, you know this, but uh, we encourage audience participation on this show. So, if you want to experience what our contestants are experiencing tonight, you can. Uh, you can get the data from Kaggle using exclamation data. Download it. Uh, accept the competition rules, train your model, make your submission, see your name on the leaderboard, uh, come up with some meme fun team name, and the top chat contestant on the leaderboard tonight, who has not won in a previous week, uh, stands to win a couple of prizes. So we've got uh, Kaggle Swag, so your choice of Kaggle Swag, um, if you're the top audience participant as well as a code to redeem a free NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute training course. Someone so. sub, someone sub, please. Sub so the hype train goes off. You have five seconds, huh? All right, sorry, Meg. I'm like, do I do it? Can I do it? Am I sub? <laughs> I'm sub, though, right? Yeah. You are. So. I can't do it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Contemplating, um, trying to figure out how to do that myself. Sorry, go for it. Go for it. Swaggle, Meg. Yeah, Swaggle and the NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute training course. Um, those will be yours if you're the top chat uh, participant in tonight's episode. So we've got 14 people on the leaderboard so far. Um, previous weeks, we've been well over 30. So it would be cool to see something similar tonight. The data set, I think, is pretty approachable. So it's, you know, as Nick said, uh, it's not a ton of rows. Last week's data set was rather large, or perhaps that was the week before. I don't remember. But um, yeah, this one's quite small, easy to work with. Um, so yeah, uh, learn what it's like to be a contestant on Slice, a data scientist, and yeah, get your submission on there and maybe win some swaggle. That's right. Oh, I appreciate I appreciate all the uh, all the yeah. subs there, Craig, and thanks for the bits, Delabge. Is that how you pronounce it? 
pronouncers in chat. Yeah, and you have to say it. Delab. 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 Love nowhere it goes. Well, it does go back to you, chat. Um, I usually don't actually say this on Slice, but uh, I will tonight. Uh, so the money sits in the PayPal, uh, and since I already have a job, and I don't really use uh, my Twitch money for, for anything, I never take it out of the PayPal. Uh, I was a poor student before, and it was really hard for me to go to conferences and travel to conferences and uh, uh, go to the things that I need to go to, financially speaking. Uh, so if you are interested in going to these things because you think it will better your career or prospects uh, or networking or whatever it might be, um, and you just feel a little handicapped because of financial situations, I was there and I'm paying it forward. So uh, feel free to reach out and uh, more than happy to, to send you some cash uh, to, uh, to uh, supplement or help you out, get to those conferences, do a little travel time. If you have to take the later flight instead of the earlier flight, that way you could fit in the social the night before and feel okay about it. If you uh, want to be in like your own room in terms of like mental space instead of being in a different room. Uh, if you want to uh, fly instead of drive somewhere because you don't know if your car is going to get you to the conference, but you know flying would. Uh, all of that kind of thing. Uh, more than happy to help you out. And we do have the hype train going now. <laughs> Amazing. You know, just a little pandering the chat, you know. Very good, very good. And do you see that Julia has started to work with the text data? Just, just starting off, it looks like. Say? As Library text recipes. Oh. She is she loading in the text. Text. She's working with the description. Great, excellent. Tidy good. text coming in now. Here we go. It's, we're, we're ready for liftoff. We're yeah. Ready for liftoff. 50 minutes to spend on on the text data, and I'm excited to see what she comes up with. So. That's right. I appreciate all love, y'all. I, I do. Thank, thanks for all the, the bits and the subs here. Oh, it looks like we've got D Rob's map coming together. I think he's got, um, you know, he mentioned in our little interview that he wanted to make some updates to the color palette that he's working with. So, you know, I think, to be honest, the year by year animate was definitely the, the best form so far. Oh yeah, at that level of like granularity. Yes, yeah, I think. Got... I suspect he may have just been doing that to iterate more quickly. Oh, maybe um, so. Yeah, because it just takes a little bit of time, maybe, for this to render per all... frame. Yeah. True. That's my guess. Yeah. No, that that's a really good one. Um, we are at 10 p.m. right now, rounding, rounding the corner here. Uh, less than an hour to go. 10:12. Um, and so I think, Meg, I yeah, I believe, I believe it may be time for, uh, some of our, one of, one of my, one of my new favorite nights, uh, yeah. on this channel. Uh, it is giveaway time, I think. I love the giveaways. So if you are interested in, uh, in participating in our giveaway, we're giving away, uh, NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute. A promo code. You could go to NVIDIA's Deep Learning Institute. It is uh, self-paced courses. Uh, anything from just getting started with machine learning all the way up to how to deal with a deep neural net architecture and setting up your GPU for GPU accelerated uh, uh, environments and and, uh, uh, and machine learning and deep learning. Uh, so if you're interested in getting access to one of these courses, feel free to just be active in chat. All you gotta do is say hello. You could spam emotes like everyone else's. You can uh, do whatever you'd like to do. And uh, so long as you say something in chat, so long as you are active in chat, uh, it is very easy to enter yourself into this giveaway. So feel free to do that. Don't forget to take me out of the the drawing this time, Nick, because I'm, I'm constantly also chatting. So I don't want to be eligible are, are you are, are you constant are you in chat That's oh yeah 100 percent of the, no I, I just like to emote at the start and at the end oh, i was yeah. gonna say that that's pretty rad like that's double duty that's hardcore yeah yeah that's way hardcore is it yeah i mean i'm like chatting in discord and i'm like 
you know, talking to you or, I mean, we did the interviews, with the, the uh, contestants tonight. I'm like, sometimes I'm live tweeting. I haven't live tweeted yet. Oh, you should. Um, you should so tell yeah, them I'm all in. over the place. Yeah. You should definitely tell them to come in. I am Meg for chat. This is crazy. I've never been at a level four hype train before. This is like, actually can crazy. Can we make it a level five? What do we got to do? You, you need you need subs, uh, gifted subs or bits. But that's crazy. I've never been in a level four hype train. That's, that's V-hype. That's V-hype. It Nick. is. It is. That is absolutely crazed. I appreciate everyone in chat. Thanks so much for that. Um, and we also have like two, three minutes to go on it. That's crazy. Um, Solid. Everyone in chat chatting and hyping it all up right now also is entering themselves into the giveaway. So feel free, feel free to hype it up, y'all. Oh my goodness. Uh, right now we're on Julia Silvia's screen and we're over here on Landon's screen now. Uh, Landon looks like he is also taking a look at different, uh, you know, GIS kind he's, of things. Um, yeah, he, I don't know. And this is, so he's on, yeah, he, he discarded the idea of using Mapbox, but we still see him looking at some Mapbox kind of documentation. So I wonder if, it, is he returning to the idea or, I, I don't know. You know, Python, and I, and I talked about this on my other streams before, Python definitely is underserved in terms of GIS, uh, in terms of visualization. Uh, it is not underserved in GIS in terms of modeling and figuring out geospatial uh, things in terms of like equations or in terms of packages that allow you to, to compute things. But in terms of visualization, uh, it is, in my opinion, a, okay, it is a little more difficult <laughs> than uh, than your GG map or uh, your your different ways you can sure. on uh, Yeah, you know what I think would be really like easy or would be really a nice tool for visualization here would be like Tableau. This is where Tableau this... would be pretty. I think it has like a map box integration like out of the box. Uh, at least uh, I've, I've used it with that integration. So that's right. Look it's kind the, of funny. But look, looking at Landon's screen, he just uh, we just quickly moved out of it. Oh, look, he did get it going. Ooh, very nice. OK, so what he was struggling with earlier was making a map where he can zoom in on a city. So here we are zoomed in on a city and yeah, he just needs to drop his um, drop his marker size, and I think he'd be okay. Um, right now, we have the paint like spray can effect that we remember from some previous maps. That's right. A little bit. That's right. Um, before we scroll down to this viz, we actually saw Landon uh, have a note uh, about how he was going to binarize his target, and he actually, if you believe it or not, Meg, he is actually binarizing his target the same way Drob binarized his target so he's doing oh. 450,000 or above whoa and which and that is quite literally what uh, uh d rob was doing uh see i would not have made that a golden feature um but it feels like the kind of thing that would be like specific enough to be like kind of a cruel golden feature you know like yes cruel is our intention of the golden feature <laughs> oh, oh, whoops oops i didn't mean that i didn't mean to reveal that <laughs> Uh, Julia looking at spa features now. Again, appreciate the hype train, y'all. Oh my god. This Wait, is... it's a level 5. We're That's at... new, we right? Are... Like... We are at 5, and this is insane. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, it's like shooting up. Like, it's... the people... bar is filling. Like, we're going to hit a level 6. People There's are carrying it right now. This is absolutely crazed. Uh, here we are with uh, Landon still looking at maps and how to do it. Uh, let's go over to Ethan, because Ethan's taking a, an approach that isn't data viz right now, and he is quite literally focused solely on modeling. And uh, to be honest, uh, you know, when when you're a baker, you make bread. So maybe yeah. maybe uh, that's what he's doing here. He's uh, making that bread. Do you, do you think Drob uh, do you think Drob needs to diversify more in terms of his data viz or do you think he he's thinking he mm. might have he might have one trick this well now I'm like did we react like a certain way to how he described like making a map like did we sound really pleased and he's like oh yeah I'm gonna double down on this 
well, animation. Well, like, I think, well, I, I told him chat liked it, and, uh... Yeah. uh exactly, like, yeah. We'll He's see. Like, well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I do think that I would like to see a little bit more diversity from, from D-Rob, but... Like, he did also express his intent to dive into the text kind of aspects of this data set, that, that description field. So um, certainly that will come with it, you know, some some data visualization that will be, yeah, quite different from maps. Um, but I'd like to see, like, a mashup map NLP data visualization. Oh, man, 90 seconds to go and we're at the final level and we're, like, 15 <gasps> percent fi away. Oh my goodness. So there's like just over a minute left for this hype train. What happens when we're at the final level? It feels dramatic. Then they, we're just there. everyone like, everyone it? gets all the emotes basically at that point. Oh my That's goodness. That's really exciting. We got Wait, there. Did it just happen? We got there. Hyper. That is that is crazy. I never Nick, thought I'm so happy. I never so thought exciting. I'd ever see that on my channel. <laughs> That's amazing. I, seriously, I never thought I'd ever see that on my channel. That's absolutely crazed. D Rob with uh, his regularization. We've seen him do this every single week. He's yeah. been on Sliced. Uh, he is tuning. He's really fine tuning his regularization, his alpha, if you will, as uh, L1, mm -hmm. L2 parameters. Um, but yeah, that's insane. Holy F. Everyone, thanks for all these wow. the bits and the donos. So many of them just now. Craig with the five. Uh, Delab uh, with tons of bits. Afton going crazy. So many, so so many. Uh, Kyle, so many bits. So so many. Just, just crazy. John, John the Geek Raider fan. Uh, appreciate the subs. Uh, wow. Literally, this this broke my feed. I, it really? Yeah, this literally broke my feed. That's crazy. How many people do we have for the 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 drawing? Uh, um, that's a great question. Uh, Twenty three right now. Uh, so we'll run that in let's say two minutes. Cool. So if you are interested in a uh, uh, deep learning institute giveaway, feel free to. Uh, Post something in chat, introduce yourself, spam some emotes, say hi, whatever you want to do, uh, and uh, we will run this in about a minute from now. Uh, while we're in this little break, uh, I'll go over here to Landon, who is making a dark mode plot. Okay. Oh, it looks like a Ebola breakout in Austin now. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> And with that, uh, let's thank our uh, supporters right. <laughs> this season. Uh, our studio, <laughs> thank you for the support. Streamlit, appreciate the support. Thank you to NVIDIA. NVIDIA helping us with the uh, uh, Deep Learning Institute giveaway. Shout out to NVIDIA AI. And uh, Z by HP, check out Z by HP Prebuilt for data science. Uh, hp.com slash data science. Red is an odd color. Red is an yeah. odd color. It's very I like agree. bloodshed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> These are all the murder houses in uh, Austin. <laughs> Zillow data set. All right, ready to roll? Yeah, let's do it. Let's roll. Okay, let me, I need to, I need to double check to make sure. Um, you know. We see Landon. Is this Landon? He's, he's checking out the the format for the the sample submission. Very important. Very important. We we heard actually that tip from Julia when we did her interview. That that's kind of like one of the very first things she wants to just housekeeping wise get out of the way is make sure that she's got the well the right evaluation metric, the right sample submission form. All right, let's roll. If you if you get this and you've Oh, won this before? Just let us know. Uh, and the winner tonight, Meg, is... Databib. Databib. Who, who congrats, just, Databib. Who just recently followed. So, congrats. Welcome and congrats. Congrats. Uh, please reach out on Discord. 
please reach on Discord and I will send you uh, the code and how to redeem it. But claps and chat for uh, DataBib. And this isn't your last chance to win this giveaway. Uh, remember, you can uh, submit to the Kaggle leaderboard. Submit your submission and the top score from yeah. not a contestant will end up uh, also with a Deep Learning Institute token as well as some swaggle. Kaggle swag. Um, and you'll, we, it looks like we're actually seeing Landon make a submission right now. So this, this is, is what it looks like if you are uh, somebody who wants to follow along. Along with our contestants, participate along. Wow, he almost blocked his own download because he's on his brother's computer, apparently. Oh! <laughs> That's funny. Oh, submitted right, values so must be positive, and he has some negative values in here because... Uh oh Oh, wait. What is his predictor? Yeah, that's odd. He should be what getting is... he should be getting class prediction probabilities. Those are definitely not probabilities. So he's he's taking a look at a little bit closer now. That hopefully he does kind Did... of recognize that. Uh, I wonder if yeah. he trained. You know you know what this is giving me flashbacks to Meg. Oh uh, yeah, tell me tell me. I know pa vaguely, but yeah. Pi pilot season. Yes. <laughs> So in the pilot season, um, Landon couldn't get his targets in the correct format, and he ended up submitting random number generator. Yep, that was our first, sadly not last, random generation, random number generator submission. Uh, there we go. He is changing uh, this. He is changing this okay. prediction type probability. There you go. There. Ooh, that's... Oh God. A very very big difference um that, so that was yeah. literally so scary meg i thought he was <laughs> i thought he was screwed i thought he was screwed yeah yeah i'm i'm glad that you know he the uh right now he is at the top of the public leaderboard yeah. he must be pretty happy about that very good again that what did you say that was just about 40 houses though that the the public leaderboard is evaluated on that is right all right, looks like we've got some text analysis. That looks like what I'm seeing. Look at the zip some code TFIDF in here. stuff. What are we seeing? Zip code. Oh, really just a zip code. Bad. Ooh, la la. Yeah. Also, apparently, laminate. Uh, for Go all you. Gourmet. <laughs> you know, this would be great to tell, uh, you know, agents out there, real estate agents. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, hey, don't use these words. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Um, very yeah. interesting, very interesting, uh, word correlated with predict Quartz, yeah. These are, yeah. So, airport, yeah. <laughs> Living near the airport, yeah. So public leaderboards basically RNG, yeah. So yeah. the object is to kind of keep it as close to the contestants uh, relying on their process uh, and not trying to get any ideas of whether or not they're ahead of the other contestants. Uh, and also for chat, uh, you're also trying to trying to uh, follow your process as opposed to leading with your outcomes. Right. Plus, we want it to be like truly dramatic when we do the leaderboard reveal at the end, right? Extremely true. We want to see some shakeup. Oh my God! Look at what Ethan is doing here. He couldn't figure out TFIDF, and so he is doing his own tokenization. Oh my god, doing this the old-fashioned way. But he, again, he's chill about it. At least that's how I interpret the little smiley face there. You know, he could have written a function for this. <laughs> yes. Look how much copy-paste there is here. What is it? You copy-paste like four four times and you should be writing a function? Yeah. Literally, the functions just define the function, def, <laughs> tokenize, and then <gasps> name, and then these would be the variables. Three times, yep. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. This this is hurting my heart. Let's go over it. <laughs> okay, and... let's look at, let's check somebody else out. We've got uh, oh we've got is this the this, this he's got some shap He does have a shap plot going. Uh -huh. He does have a shap plot going. This is multi label, so the thing that he needs to yeah. recognize is um, it doesn't look like his typical SHAP summary, and that's because there's uh, all these different predictors. Uh, in SHAP, in the SHAP values, if he just indexes through, uh, if he just slices through one, 
or zero through n, any of those numbers will give him the actual shop summary plot that he's uh, more used to. But if you aren't so familiar with Shap, and remember Landon is a brand new data scientist, got his job literally two weeks ago, uh, he may not have so much experience with Shap, uh, maybe he doesn't know those tips and tricks, so that, that shouldn't hurt him if he's just doing overall feature analysis, but it's there's definitely some nuance depending on the type of uh, uh, price bracket um, you want to be predicting on. So maybe he wants to like turn certain features up or turn certain features down, uh, and he won't have that insight unless he's able to cut through that chap value uh, data frame there. I'm seeing some other plots that maybe we'd miss earlier, looking yeah. garage space by home type. That's cool. I think, um, yeah, we're seeing, you know, Landon hasn't been, you know, the most invested in data visualization of our contestants, certainly, but um, we're definitely seeing more from Landon than we are from Ethan, right? I would say so. I have Landon with a few more points uh than, than Ethan in the data viz category. Uh, we do see a lot of things like this from Landon, and again, a lot of out-of-the-box plotting. It, it, it's nice to see, but it's uh, not exactly uh, spicy. Yeah, yeah, we want spicy, we need, spicy plots. We need a little more, you know, I need a little more seasoning, you know? Not blood, though. Please, Less blood. <laughs> please, please no. <laughs> Here we are with Julia. Uh, I might have to be right back, Meg. Okay. Should uh, we what, chill with Julia? Do you, what screen would you like to see for the next minute? Yeah, let's let's chill with Julia, and I'll kind of take a peek at other contestants while you're out and try to like live narrate uh, if I'd see anything else interesting. Go for it. All right, just me and you, chat. All right, so Julia is still, okay, let's check out this. I didn't read this meme earlier. I'm training a lot of models. You'll adjust your p-values, right? Yeah, cute. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that we see some of the output of some of Julia's text analysis at some point. Um, so we had asked her earlier on, I think she was one of our the uh, first two contestants that we chatted with um, at the start of the show and she like sounded most excited to dig into the text, like the description data set. And so when we, I think we saw her bust out tidy text around the one hour mark, um, but haven't seen a whole ton yet at this point. Um, but it uh, looks like, she, yeah, so she's done a little bit of like the, the pre-processing stuff. Um, and it looks like we're very close to a plot here. Hopefully we'll have something um, before the time, you know, Nick gets back, so you're not just hearing me <laughs> fill, fill air. Um, but I'll check out and see if, you know, any of our other contestants are doing anything noteworthy. Um, so right now, D-Rob is uh, still doing a lot with the lat long data. So I think we saw earlier on he had that insight um, from his uh, feature importance plot that, you know, location, location, location. So. You know, maybe that is why he's, you know, digging in pretty heavily into the uh, geographic aspects of the data set. Um, and I would consider that in spite of the fact that he could be doing a lot with the text data. Um, yeah, so the price data was uh, sourced from Zillow. Um, <laughs> that is that is correct. Um, so I'll check out what some of the other contestants are doing. Um, Looks like Ethan is just working on some cross-validation stuff right now. I just kind of see him scrolling through his notebook. Uh, be cool if like he could hand off like yeah controls. Um, let's see. We've got okay. Here we go. We've got uh, Julia looking at. I'm not sure. Oh hey Nick. Welcome Hi. To... Well... I, 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 Hi. I, I snuck in while you're doing a going around the horn. Oh wow. I feel creeped on. Whoa! Um, but I'm I'm uh, glad you're back because maybe you can help me figure out what what this is that we're looking at. So we're she's plotting p values, uh, I... but I'm not. Uh... She's trying to adjust her p values. So if you're familiar, y'all, uh -huh. take it back to some adjusted p value, adjusted r squared stuff. Like if you remember. Um, 
uh, a Bonferroni correction. Yeah. You uh, do. Uh, you may want to adjust your p-values as you you have more samples in. Uh, Ooh. In, we got some labels. Uh, we do. This is actually really interesting because I haven't seen p values used in this way. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, this is an unfamiliar one to me. Yeah. Um, so this does exist, and obviously they're all significant, right? E to the uh, minus ten. So these are all significant uh, p values. These are all. They all have some sort of significance to them, uh, but they do vary in terms of how many how many times they appear. And so depending on uh, the, the number of times a particular word might appear, you might want to adjust your p-value uh, to match uh, your, mm. the, the amount of times it, it occurs in your sample or in your data set. Okay, and we see like she's writing now in her, her notes um, some of her interpretations of this plot, like words like outdoor, custom pool, sweet office, increase with price. Uh, so those words are associated with the higher prices. Words like new paint, carpet, great tile, clothes, Close flooring decrease with price. Um, this reminds me a little bit of um. Oh, I'm gonna struggle to recall the title of the book. It was a book about um, like linguistics of like food by Dan Jarafsky, and it was talking about like the the words that are used on like l like low cost, low price, like kind of shoddy restaurants versus like upscale restaurants, like at a at, a, at like a McDonald's, like. You might use like the word fresh to describe food, whereas like if you're at like a Michelin star restaurant, like obviously the food is fresh. Um, uh, so, you know, there's really no reason to describe the food as fresh. So you know, where does like hole in the wall fall in, in that in the that kind of like classification? Delicious. I don't know. Like, but I'm not. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, Back here with the blood uh, plot cheap from from. Oh, actually, we had a few. We had this. Uh, faceted statistical plot uh, looking for like correlations and overlapping uh, um, distributions but we also have uh, you know the 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 Ebola plot so uh, yes <laughs> we do this, this is, by the way this is a shout out y'all to the Ebola the famous Ebola spread data viz okay is, is, is that what we were going for, Meg? Is there really a famous Ebola spread data set or uh, visualization? Yeah, like, yes. It's like, it was red, I think. Oh, well, yeah, of course. I didn't realize that I was actually <laughs> making a real reference. I mean, it's just so, like, duh to make a, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I might, wait, hold on. I'm, I might be thinking of a different famous date of this. Um, okay. Like, okay. it was outbreaks in London. Oh, are we going back to the Jon Snow? Oh, or that's the... what it was. Yeah, or was it Jon Snow? No. Yeah, the uh, e that was the cholera. The oh, cholera. cholera. Oh, different yeah. pandemic disease. How many different diseases? Wow, yikes. I'm learning a lot about myself on Sliced, Nick. Uh, <laughs> why do I gravitate to things? Yeah. That's right, uh, Jon Snow. I Yeah, you know, the funny thing about that reference is Meg won't get it. Which of, one won't I get? Oh yeah, Thrones I've never reference. seen Game of Thrones. Game, yeah. Game of Thrones reference. Oh, I can't believe I just admitted that on the internet. It, well, the thing about admitting Game of Thrones that you don't that you haven't seen Game of Thrones is that everyone is now going to recommend to you Game of Thrones. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh no! Look how close. Ooh, if, we've got your bill by price. If, okay. If you use it. If he turns this into the hue, and we go lat long, or, or, or if we do a, a, like five different things to change this plot, <laughs> it will become a golden feature. So far, we haven't had anybody find a golden feature. Is that right? We have not. We haven't seen yeah. faceted by city, and we have not seen uh, hue by year built. Honestly, I thought that they were pretty low hanging yeah. fruit. I thought they seemed kind of straightforward. Yeah, these were not cruel, despite what I said earlier about all of our golden features being cruel. I didn't think these ones were. No, I did yeah. not. Um, oh, winding yep. down here, we are definitely past uh, the 30 minutes remaining. We have a little over 20 minutes remaining, y'all. And 
you know, let's get let's get some claps in chat for our contestants, y'all. Claps in chat, hearts in chat for our contestants tonight. This is the last time you'll see four contestants on Sliced. We have the finals next week. That's head oh to God. head. That's head to head. It's the top two from this week. Move on to the finals next week. We will be saying goodbye to two contestants, two semi-finalists tonight. So it's happening too fast. They grow up too fast. They do, they do grow up so fast. Here's Ethan with he's still working with Okay, so he is now catching up to the other contestants with uh Latitude, Longitude, and Price. So we do see uh Price here as a feature. Now if um if he wa if Ethan was so wise as to use my chat command exclamation B box <laughs> He would find how to take the legend and move it outside of the plot. <laughs> Don't it, watch enough of your stream. You just, you know, that's how you, that's how you could tell the casuals from the real fans. <laughs> <laughs> that looks uh, pretty nice. Huh? This is, this is nice. This is nice. Um, it's pretty it's pretty basic though. It is fairly basic and we have seen better. We have seen better. Uh here we are with Julia. She looks like she is actually, you know, taking a swing at some of this uh uh text analysis and, and doing the little regex along the way. Uh and this regex again is based off what she was seeing through her P value adjustment, which, you know, if if there was post game interviews, I would absolutely be talking to her about that. Yes, yeah. Very, that is see. very interesting, very, very creative. Um, wow. How's the leaderboard looking? You know, I was literally just going to say, I'm going to check the leaderboard and see what we got. So we are up to 20 people on the leaderboard. It's pretty funny. The, the only person on the leaderboard, apologies for the call out, who is uh, who has a public leaderboard sco score below the sample submission is Age of Neil, who was actually our winner from last week's audience participation. That is right. Prize. Yeah, Participate. Yeah, Participate. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We'll see if that, that will likely change um, when we take a look at the private leaderboard in under 20 minutes. Uh, golden feature check, zero. We have had uh, no golden features discovered. So far, uh, despite both Nick and I thinking they're fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, you know, uh, especially in terms of EDA, you would assume that you'd just facet about uh, about a lot of different Ooh. things. But everyone ended up faceting yeah. by um, uh, home type and not uh, yeah. all the other different ways you could facet, you know? You know, I think in the pilot season of Slice, we did like more generic kind of golden features like create a faceted plot. Um, whereas this season, we've been like maybe more specific about we want to see these factors um, specifically plotted. But um, yeah, I mean, I think they definitely should be hard to discover. Like otherwise they'd be called like coal lumps of dirt. Features oh, here, or... oh, here we go. This is this is a better view of uh, you know it's not it's not blood red anymore. It's a uh, white marks now on the black we background. Did. Yeah. So so Landon is scoring a lot of data of his points. Uh, oh, this is a little nicer, a little uh, blue to white color gradient. Um, I I what is the he doesn't have a legend here so i don't yeah, i assume it's well i'm trying oh, to i think look, it's here it price. is no no median students per teacher oh okay that's he's doing something different that's yeah. kind of nice to see yeah yeah so he's so theoretically uh less schools more students that means higher concentration of people in a particular area and less resources in that area perhaps indicating uh the difference in terms of resources or tax bracket, or however you want to call it, uh, the haves and have-nots. Uh, and so uh, Landon going with a little more, uh, you know, geopolitical, perhaps. You know, and local government, and uh, local uh, socioeconomic status, median students per teacher. 
And uh, let's see, we're looking at the same impact on price level of various words from from DRob. But I haven't seen a ton of like different types of ways of kind of like looking at this data, uh, the text data so far. No, and you know, they did leave it to the end here. I'm assuming it's because they know they're going to get the most juice out of all the features uh, that are numeric and categorical for them already. Uh, so diving into the, the text data, I wonder if they're thinking it's small potatoes compared to what they could have got out of the data. Uh, here we are with Garage. Oh, so uh, Ethan going with a lot of different uh, ways to plot the data as well. He has Garage Spacing in Austin, which is a funny plot since... <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard to make that one out. But... <laughs> okay. Um, back to Landon. Landon Median School per Teacher. Uh, again, uh, still with those white plot uh but now it's uh he's his labeling is a little weird it, it's uh i don't think it's actually the same um i don't think it's actually the same um uh, dv so i wonder what he's plotting now lat long um you know it'd be great if he like oh. annotated a little better <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, we've got now school ratings by Geo from, from Ethan. Oh, here um, we go. Oh, we, we are in a data viz battle right now. I, uh, I love and I hate when this happens in the last like 15 minutes and I'm like frantically taking notes, frantically like adjusting my scores. We are uh, absolutely in a data viz battle and you know, the, that's the best part about Slice. They don't even know that they're in this battle. I know. I love that. I love that. They have no idea that they're in a fight for data viz points right now. I said that there are going to be not a lot of them. And let me tell you, there might not be a lot of them. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so, so interesting. This is a battle between the two Python folks. Uh, the yeah. Two, the two R folks right now. Uh, we see D-Rob here with zip code analysis. Uh, and so he might be trying to do, oh, he, he is. So he might be trying to do a little, uh, Euclidean distance to the nearest, uh, you know, expensive zip code or how far away you are from a particular zip code. So trying to work in some distance metrics here. Uh, we'll see if that actually helps him out in terms of the plotting. Uh, Landon here did get his, uh, model tuned and trained. He is submitting up, uh, his newest prediction so not exactly the last moments of the evening that is good down to less than 14 mm. minutes left to go ethan here uh with a correlation just univariate here school rating and teachers um d rob with a horizontal plot still uh his priciest zip codes here and uh zip codes based to less than four miles Zip code based on less than four miles to nearest zip code. Zip code based on less. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. Nearest zip code center within four. What? <laughs> um. All right, Julia. Yeah, let's move <laughs> on from the zip codes. <laughs> so Julia, working with her text data here. Uh, you know, this is you know. It's like watching watching Picasso paint. Yeah, I mean, okay, so live coding is intimidating, but live regexing has to be like 10x more intimidating. This fortunately looks pretty simple. She's just pulling out like these, these words that she identified from one of her previous plots, but I would not want to live regex. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would not either, uh, but again, we're, wa we're watching a master class right now. That is right. Uh, here's Ethan uh, with some plots still doing school ratings. And I wonder if he's he's plotted this a lot of times. Uh, I wonder if this means he's just going to uh, develop a few more different cuts here. I do, yeah. I do get a sense. I do get a sense here that we might be doing a little uh, fishing for golden features here, man. I think so. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is... This is like the simplest way to go for quanti quantity, right? Is he just sort of like, again, he's copy pasting, right? Um, copy pasting and then just like swapping out, you know, the factors that he's uh, 
queuing by or whatever it may be, whatever or whatever numeric value. He's looking at all the numeric values here, but uh, yeah. Here's Landon doing something that uh, is very late in the game to do, but nevertheless important, reading the docs. Reading the documentation. <laughs> reading the docs. That is uh, that is important. Uh, I think he is just looking, similarly to Ethan, uh, places to fish. Uh, speaking of viz, we haven't seen D-Rob in a bit, and he is doing a little viz, but a little different. It is model metric visualization, looking at his log loss through his parameter tune grid. Uh, still just trying to tune up his model. I think he does know he's going to need every single second if he wants to get uh, the next best model train. Uh, he is up against Ethan, who beat him once before, and he is also up against Landon, who has beat him uh, once as well. And on the public leaderboards, uh, when they've been in chat, just going head-to-head, -head, uh, not in the contest, uh, it's been quite the back and forth. D-Rob at the top, usually in the top five uh, every week, uh, as, ha as has been Landon and also Ethan. So uh, we'll be extremely quick to finish. Ten minutes to go, the last fours this is the semi-finals the top two go into this to the finals next week and that is going yeah, to who do you want to see go to the finals because uh we've got the vote chat vote will be coming up soon so Whew. yeah what it, it is crunch time oh and it's also apparently meme time if we could get d-rob's screen to load oh we just <laughs> missed one oh damn it oh here it is oh. here it is <laughs> <laughs> that's good i <laughs> appreciate it um i appreciate it yeah we've got memes on memes here <laughs> yeah that's pretty epic that's pretty epic <laughs> hey did you like that d rob had a bunch of like uh uh memes ready to go in in the rolodex there yeah, he did. He was like, well, allow me to answer your question with a meme. And he literally did it. Yeah. Um, ooh, we've got some uh, late in the game data visualization from Julia looking at um, oh. price range. Um, oh, and the proportion of these words. Like, that's really cool. This is so cool. That is awesome. God, Julia, the last two weeks, Julia has, I mean, obviously it's not surprising, but she has surprised me in like how yeah. cre creative on the fly she could be with these like mm -hmm. late in the game uh data viz. This is yeah. This is again just I mean Julia Silligy tidy text. This is <laughs> we are beautiful. We are absolutely Speaking seeing... of pool, those look like pool noodles. I'm like Oh yeah, a little pool noodle vibe. And you know, Austin is quite hot right now. Perhaps uh take a dip in the pool. Bring some of your, uh, you know, TFIDF pool noodles with you. TFIDF pool noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over to There's... Ethan. Oh, wait! He did it! No! He did it! Yes, yes, you're built! Oh, he... yeah, we got it. This Ethan is actually picture. got it! This actually okay. might save all of the points he was probably not going to be getting. I know, right? I know. Oh, my God. He fished and he got it. He, he did it. He fished and he got it. That's gonna happen. All right, so we've got Ethan with 10 points. He's uh, the first person to discover a golden feature. So probably, probably the last with just eight minutes remaining too. That's right. Uh, let's go to the other uh, data visitor right now. And uh, he is really focused on this idea of uh, uh, teachers and um, and yeah, it's seeing, either way, we can see that rural areas have higher, uh, well, I don't know if that's better. Is that better? I don't know. What was, what was higher number of, te oh yeah, that is better. Higher number of teachers per student, which is a good thing, true. More one-on-one yeah. -on -one time with your teacher is better, yes. Yeah. Uh, so he's actually going with more of a storytelling vibe here as opposed to a fish vibe. Uh, what, yeah, what do you, I would say so. What do you think about that? I think that's I think that's pretty cool. Like I think um, you know I'd rather see this sort of like investment in an iteration um, on these plots than what we see you know by contrast with um, with Ethan, um, where he was just looking at 
just like chunk, 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 literal different chunks of the data. And then uh, also contrasting with D-Rob, who we saw, he just spent a lot of iteration on a single kind of view of the data when it came to the, that map, so. Um, <laughs> Landon giving himself uh, some tweetable tweetable moments here. Looks like I took an education fo focus for my analysis, lol. Some hashtags and some more lols. Uh, you know, lols in chat for Landon. Lols in chat for Landon. Education, that is true. That is also how he spelt it. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan. Five minutes, or just uh, oh, just about five minutes. Ethan wow. is looking at a white screen. Oh, there it is. Okay, lo loaded, loaded. Pad boost. Uh, still sitting at twenty people who've made submissions to the Kaggle leaderboard. So, if you're gonna uh, throw your name in for some swaggle or the D Nvidia Deep Learning Institute training code. Yeah. Now is the time to do now it. Now is the time, y'all. Now is the time. I cannot believe Ethan actually, actually dug that one out. I honestly he did. I honestly yeah. did not think. Oh, look, he actually had it here. Golden features, plot something over year built. What? He actually wrote that in his notes. Get out of my head. Texas Wait, map, extract something specific from text. Wow. Plot something with the over year built, uh, some kind of viz with lot size. I gotta say, it's interesting to see, like, Golden Features figuring into their, like, strategy, though. It's kind of neat. I love it. Again, like, I don't even know how they're figuring that out. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, for those who did not... <laughs> okay, this is... <laughs> oh my god, come on. <laughs> He's. <laughs> Wait, what, are we really watching this right now? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Maybe no. Okay. So this is what he's doing. Did he lose? The, what no. Is he doing? Okay. So okay. First, I thought he was. First, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. First, I thought he was trying to like get ahead, but I believe because of what he said in his interview, he's actually trying to compare his um, log loss with the from the public leaderboard to the private leaderboard because he wants to know how off he might be yeah so he's just trying to get more of a vibe of like is he yep. a, is he on the right track That's the shake up. yeah exactly he, which to be honest this wouldn't be the first time that we had a run in with landon almost cheating um he did a code before 9 p.m once we did have to slap the wrist uh and he also uh penalized himself for 10 minutes coding yeah. At the Starbucks. Why 404? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Why 404, Meg? That's right. Why, why 404, Meg? Too true. That one is actually too true. So. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um. Landon, uh, you know, he is still trying to tune into this model. Uh, three minutes left to go. Uh, a lot of the contestants, really the one that I'm most interested in is if Julia is going to put in another. Oh, he, she is. She is. She's actually trying for one more model. And she has like, Ooh. this happened last time. This happened to Julia last time. Yeah. Three minutes. Wow. Well, well luckily for this tune word XG boost model, what she's done is she's extracted the tidy, or she's extracted the text information. She's used the p-values as her numeric features, and she's plugged that in uh, as as a feature, maybe multiple features in her column set or in her feature set. Uh, and so, whatever XG Boost model tune was before, ideally she's going to get a little more juice out here. Now, how much? I have no clue. But right now, as it stands, uh, Julia's models. She's only put up two. She is sitting uh, on the public leaderboard 14th place, and the difference between 14th and 1st is 0.07. So it's super, wow. super, super close tonight. Super, super close tonight. Let's go over to D-Rob. D-Rob here, also tuning down his model, really trying to figure out that regularization parameter. Unsure if oh, no! What? What are we Julia, seeing? Julia, Julia bombed. No! Oh my god. Talk about worst time to bomb. Two minutes left. Julia's session crash. Ouch. That Oof. she Oof. Julia she's not gonna get that back. It's two minutes left. 
That yeah. we'll see if she actually goes through. God, that is the worst timing. Let's go yes. over to eat or let's go over to Landon. Landon's putting up his Make another submission. Okay. Most likely last uh, model tune here. Uh, it does seem like better than his previous ones, but his second or really his first model submission seemed to be best. Uh, let's go back over to Julia. Let's see if she's going to recover here. Wow, not great timing on. Oh, <laughs> Ouch, yeah. Oh. Well, that's that's. We'll never know. Well, an we... hour and fifty-eight minutes of live coding. Yeah. Well, we will know <laughs> when she actually does the screen share when she does the screencast, but we won't. Yep. We won't yep. know tonight. Let's go over to Landon. Landon, uh, trying to show off some data viz, but now confused as to why his model tunes are not the way that they should be. Julia, uh, going through her data viz just one more time. Uh, this is also in the order that she was running herself, so we'll see if she could get something out. Uh, I don't think she will be less than a minute to go. D-Rob here with some feature importance, and this is... Uh, I don't know if any of these features are new from the from the model train that he's done. He is frantically trying to I'm find his, where he was coding this in. Ethan here with school ratings now. Uh, he really just diving into uh, different visualizations. Uh, Next we... posting. It's it's time. Oh, it's done. Pencils down. Keyboards down. Mics down. No, not mics down. Um, yeah, I've let our contestants know to stop coding, make their final submissions, make sure that they're in and selected. That was it. That was the semifinals. That's the last fours. That's the last fours, Meg. That's the last fours. Why four, Nick? Why four? Why, why four? Why four, Meg? Um, oh. I'm like awkwardly reaching for my whiteboard here. This oh, is a tough goodness. one for me. Wow. Oh my goodness. Hey, how do you feel? I don't know how to feel right now. It's sort of like I, I only realize at this moment like how tense I've been this entire time, you know? And then I'm like, Oh my god. All right. <laughs> that was two hours of um that was pretty tense. That was very tense. Let's yeah. um get the poll going. Yeah, let's kick off the poll. So this is uh the chat component of our contestants' points tonight. So they'll be getting points from data visualization, golden features, modeling, and chat. You have a say in who are the final two contestants that advance? to the finals. Um, so uh, among those who you vote for, the number one will earn 10 points, and number two will earn five points. So I'm gonna kick off a poll. Um, you can choose between Ethan, Julia, Landon, and D-Rob, AKA David Robinson. So I'm gonna kick that off now. Hopefully you had practice from some of our earlier polls. Let us know who's gonna win the chats. Chats vote. Just recall all of those live looking interviews that we did. Who did you resonate with the most? Who do you think did the best tonight? Who do you want to see compete again in one week? I want to see everybody compete again in one week. I, I hope we do. In some way, I hope we do. In some way, yeah. I think that means like, the uh, the non-winners, I won't say losers, the non-winners <laughs> join us and heckle, heckle each other or something uh, in chat next week. All right. Oh, this looks like it's uh, going to be a contest so far between Julia and D-Rom. Ethan is coming up with some Ethan, votes here. Yeah. This Let's is... get a lot of votes. We got a lot of people in chat. We know we got a lot of people viewing. Uh, remember, y'all, all you got to do is uh, over over there past Meg's... Over yonder. Over yonder yeah, past somewhere. Meg, you'll have your chat window. And your chat window, which looks kind of like this, uh, you can click at the very top. And at the very top will be a drop-down for whoever, whomever you would like to vote for. And Meg, I think they're trying. Wow. No. Don't. No. Y'all, <laughs> we're going to have to get rid of this. <laughs> you play this game every time. <laughs> I think they're actually trying. They are trying. <laughs> don't t don't talk about it, Nick. You're gonna make it worse. <laughs> I I, did, I read I read chat. Chat already is on Team Tie. 
Chat is already on Team Ty. Oh, this on Team Ty. This it's is... not tied. It is not tied. We've got some people on our side. Team co-hosts. No ties. Julia wins it. D Julia. Rob one vote away. <laughs> All right. They well, congrats, Julia. They really tried. They really tried. Oh. All right, so we've got Julia with 10 points and Dave D. Rob with five points. Um, and it looks like we had a tie between Ethan and Landon. Um, so Nick, you can let me know the order that we'll be going in um, um, momentarily. The order will be Landon, Ethan, D. Rob, Julia. Landon. Ethan, you Rob, Julia. Cool. All right, so that is 10 points, Julia. Five points, David. Um, we can talk about our golden features. What do you say? Please do. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep this brief. <laughs> um, so as a reminder for those watching and uh, for our contestants who are now in chat, I believe, uh, we had as always, two golden features tonight. The first was to plot Lat Lon uh, as XY and Year Built as the Hue. And the second golden feature was uh, a plot with Facet by City. So Austin was not the only city in the data set. So if you had faceted by a city in any kind of plot, that would have been the second golden feature. So we had one contestant discover one golden feature and that contestant was Ethan. So Ethan plotted the uh, latlon, the latitude longitude, as XY with your built as the hue, because he made lots of plots with lots of different factors. Uh, and that happened to be one of them. Uh, so uh, that is 10 points for one golden feature to Ethan. And then we have uh, none of the other contestants having discovered any other golden features. So uh, that puts our standing currently at Ethan with 10 points. For the golden feature, Julia with 10 points from the chat vote, and David D. Rob with five points from second place chat vote, and Landon so far at zero. Oh. I'm already drained. This is mentally mentally taxing. You, we, I feel like you shouldn't say that while our contestants are now watching. It's but it's but I'm just <laughs> it, it just feels so like it just feels kind of crazed i feel I, I mean do you still feel crazed from that hype train oh well I, i'm gonna be living off that one for a while yeah yeah that was pretty crazy um i mean yes i feel yeah yeah it is it is it is draining yes for sure i mean we talked about how i am chatting in like five different places at once at all times so yes that's draining it's a life choice <laughs> draining Shall we go to the most um, draining part, Meg, for us? No, let's just go ahead and skip skip it this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, before Sorry. before we uh, get to this part, y'all, I just want to uh, 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 say thanks one more time to our supporters of season, our studio, Streamlit, Nvidia, and Z by HP. Please check out Z by HP's site hp.com slash data science. All right, you ready with Landon first, Meg? Yeah, I think I am. All right, three, two, one, Landon. <laughs> Why four, Meg? <laughs> I gave him five. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, why four, Meg? Because um, I didn't give anybody any fours last week. So, <laughs> um, no. But in in seriousness, um, I I liked what Landon did. I think like initially, um, you know, we had some I guess like critiques of his plots that they look like um, very bloody and kind of like Ebola maps, but I ended up really liking what he did um, like 
in terms of iterating on those maps and how that allowed him, as we noted during the show, to tell like a story. You know, he really had like, he really took a focus like education and really kind of like extracted a narrative from the data set that we liked a lot. And I think the plots were effective at um, visualizing that. Um, like that said, I think it was maybe otherwise kind of light on on data visual visualization. Um, we saw some basic kind of EDA stuff, distribution stuff. We had the um, the the shap values. It kind of you know messed around a little, a little bit with the elliptic garage by home type. So we saw a few other things. So there was also some variety in there, um, but those are pretty basic kind of EDA stuff. But uh, yeah, that would be my why for Meg for you, Nick, and for Chat and for Landon tonight. You know, I, I, the five points. I, I really love the fact that he tied that story through. Uh, he did kind of meme on himself at the end, saying he was really education focused. But something that I really love, uh, which we saw uh, last week with with Julia, is when you start drilling down into one thing and really kind of like tear apart a story and like really start narrating that story through data viz. I love that. I, I love that every time. So, anyway, uh, Ethan, are you ready? Oh no, I'm you're, not. you're not ready. Oh, I should be erasing and writing as you're talking, but um, I apparently can't handle that. Okay, <laughs> so we're doing Ethan next. Yes. Okay, I'll get the hang of this show eventually. Okay, well, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one, Ethan. Why two, Meg? Okay, um, so for wait, what, what was your I gave, score? I, I gave him three. A three. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, it's I'm on the delay with you, chat. Um, so the reason I gave Ethan a two is, well, there wasn't there wasn't like a, an enormous amount of data visualization. Um, we did see like a lot of maps and. Um, but I think we all, we, we kind of like, we're comparing like the different like mapping strategies between D-Rob, Ethan, and Landon. And the thing that we said about Ethan was, um, you know, he kind of just like took one thing that worked, copy pasted it, and then just, um, you know, changed one factor. And so ended, ended up kind of going for quantity in that sense, but, um, it didn't kind of like weave a story in the same way that it did, uh, for Landon. And um, it didn't sort of like go deep on, you know, iterating into some some kind of like beautiful end product like it did in the case uh, for David that we'll, we'll um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that, you know, momentarily. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we also kind of saw like it was clearly kind of guided by the golden feature hunting, which obviously paid off. You know, he got those 10 points to the golden features. But um, yeah, as far as um, like for the data visual visualization portion like that's why it's a little maybe lower the lower end for me so all right you ready with d rob oh well you didn't talk this time so now i'm not <laughs> and i have an excuse so okay i am ready all right three two one d rob why seven meg i gave him five Okay, why seven? Um, so yeah, going back to the map stuff that we saw from David, I really loved that we saw um, the, his use of animation uh, this time around. And uh, I mentioned that, you know, use, use of like GG Animate or, you know, some kind of like, animation library um, to create like GIFs was something that I had long thought about making a golden feature. In fact, um, but kind of thought it would be a little too reachy, perhaps, uh, for a golden feature to kind of expect folks to create, create GG Animate. So, like that, I really liked. I liked uh, again. I liked just seeing like that process of like iterating on something that's really kind of um, you know ends up in a in a really nice kind of like end product. Um, we did kind of say like uh, you know this can't be sort of like a one trick. Data viz, and we were a little nervous that he would kind of stick on that plot for a little bit too long, perhaps, you know, in response to some, you know, positive reinforcement or validation from chat uh, that we liked that, you know, we liked that um, when we did the kind of like live look in interview. But I'd say like we did see um, ultimately, you know, more variety from what um, D Rob was doing 
Um, whether it was, you know, kind of like more EDA stuff and then getting into a lot more stuff with like location, which he noted as an important part of his model. Um, and then even, you know, a little bit of like text analysis. Um, so yeah, overall pretty high marks for me, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, some, you know, what I loved about Langdon is also what I loved about D-Rob's biz tonight. Um, I really liked, uh, well, similar and different. Landon's storytelling through DataViz was really awesome. Um, D-Rob's creativity in DataViz was just phenomenal, and I think they both hit me really similar ways. Um, all right, Julia, nice. if you all know how to do subtraction, you know it already. But uh, <laughs> three, two, one, Julia Silgi. We both gave her seven. Why seven, Meg? Um, yeah, this is honestly like one of the harder um, data visualization scoring like of Slice for me overall. And I think I may just seem like more chill because this is like the apparently the eleventh time that I've done it. But this was really hard um, to like kind of like oh between D, D Rob and Julia, like I was so torn. Um, and then I ultimately you know said like, oh, I don't have to be torn. They can both get the same score. So um, I I really liked Julia's uh, data visualization and particularly the stuff that she did um, with her, uh, with the tidy text analysis, which is, you know, really no surprise probably. Um, but I thought they were beautiful plots. I thought they were beautiful insights. I loved that she, um, although I don't think she was able, I think she was kind of um, foiled by the R bomb there at the end. I love that she was, you know, using that uh, the tidy text analysis, the the visualizations to pull out more features for her model. Um, that's that sort of like you know end to end kind of like use of data visualization and modeling. Seeing that married together really nicely in her analysis was 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 lovely. Um, and that's just sort of like cherry on top of what we're just really beautiful data visualizations overall. Um, we saw like right out of the gate, we saw some great like educational data visualization too, kind of paired with that meme, uh, the scatter plot versus hex bins. Like a, let's not like forget that early data visualization from Julia. Like that's just like solid, just solid, solid, solid. Um, but no surprises. Oh. All right, y'all. Uh, where are we in, currently with points, Meg? My scores, yeah. by the way, were five, three, five, seven. All right. Well, you can tell me if this sounds wrong. I can tell you the totals, and you'll correct me uh, if anything sounds off. But um, so currently, we're sitting at uh, Landon has nine points uh, mm -hmm. that he's earned from data visualization. And then we've got Ethan, who has 15 points. This is earned from goal, uh, the golden feature and data visualization. Then we have D-Rob with 17 points through second place in the chat vote and some data visualization scores. And then finally, we've got Julia uh, at 24 points, uh, having won the chat vote and coming in strong with data visualization points. So, All right, chat. Time. This is the moment we wait for. <laughs> um, the metric was log loss. The metric was log loss, chat. The lowest log loss wins, okay? The lowest log loss is the winner uh, with 30 points. Uh, 10 points will go to second place, and third place gets five points. We are going to start with Landon Buchner. Landon Buchner has a log loss score of 0 0.902. Landon Buchner, log loss, 0 0.902. Lower number is better. Lower number is better. I'm loving the live commentary, the live reactions from Ethan right now, one of our contestants. <laughs> um, Ethan Douglas. Ethan Douglas has a log loss of 0 0.873. Oh, man. Ethan has <laughs> a log loss of 0 0.873. Right now, Ethan is in first, Landon second. D-Rob uh, 
To come in first, he needs to beat 0.873. Uh, to come in second, he needs to beat 0.902. D Rob has a score. D Rob has a score of. Remember, lower is better. Uh, to be one, he needs to be 0.873. The Rob has a score of 0. 0.889. Oh, 0.889. D Rob currently sitting in second. Right now, Ethan is on to the finals. Right. Wow. Right now, Ethan is on the files. This comes down to Julia Silgi and D Rob. Oh my God. Um, the other person joining Ethan in the finals is. David Robinson. Congratulations, D Rob. You are going to the finals. Ethan will be there to meet you. Julia had a log loss of 0 0.924. Landon had a log loss of uh, 0 0.92, 902. So uh, first place in modeling is Ethan. Second goes to D-Rob. Third to Landon. Extremely close tonight. Wow. Literally a three-point difference between D-Rob and Julia. That is functionally a tie. If literally D-Rob got two more points or two more votes, he would have won chat. Uh, you know, golden features were right there for both of them. Uh, Julia literally so close. The finals, y'all. Next week, head-to-head. -head. Ethan Douglas. This is Somebody called it R versus Python. It's Ethan Douglas and David Robinson. Uh, let's get hearts in chat, claps in chat. Thank you so much for your participation this, uh, this season. Landon and Julia, thank you so, so much. So incredible, so amazing for uh, Landon and Julia. Uh, this is the end of the road for your slice journey this season. Fierce competitors, incredible show tonight. Thank you, Landon and Julia. But truly, congratulations, Ethan, and congratulations, D Rob. How do you feel about Ethan and D Rob in the finals, Meg? I'm psyched. Um, I mean, like, as we were discussing, like, when we kicked the show off tonight, kind of like just surveying these matchups that we've seen over the course of the season, like, I think this is, this is going to be outstanding uh, to see Ethan and, and D-Rob duke it out that next is, week in the final. That is right. And to be honest, before I forget, and I literally did forget, the person who did win Ooh. the public uh, Kaggle, uh, or sorry, the uh, non-contestant Kaggle submission is Brent Snyder. Brent Snyder, I don't believe you've won before. Congrats. No, I do not have a Brent Snyder on my list. So Brent Snyder, uh, check uh, your Kaggle email uh, or your Kaggle DMs or whatever it might be uh, for your links to Swaggle and also your uh, 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 Deep Learning Institute code. But uh, you know what's crazier, Meg? Tell me. Ethan wasn't just the best tonight. Ethan was, been... Ethan was number one overall. Oh, damn. On the board. On tonight's leaderboard, oh. Ethan was actually number one on the private leaderboard. Has that happened before? I don't know, but... That's wild. He There's is... a lot more of chat participants than there are contestants, so... He, he uh. is... He will be coming in hot. He will be coming in hot coming off an insane modeling win an insane modeling win tonight absolutely um so 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 close tonight that was insane meg yeah, that was wild that was um insane. good up good up really good really good um again thanks to uh our you know our supporters uh our studio streamlit nvidia and z by hp 
Uh, I'm Nick Wynn. I'm the data science manager at KFC. Uh, my host, my, uh, our, my co-host is Meg Rizdal. Yeah, I'm Meg Rizdal. I lead product at Kaggle. And, uh, you know, we've had such a freaking fantastic season up to now. We have one more episode, the championship episode, coming in uh, next week. D-Rob vs. Ethan. I'm so excited to see how that's going to fall out. And, uh, you know, that's going to be so fun. That's going to be so, so fun. Um, anyway, uh, let's raid. We're going to join me in a raid. Please join me in a raid here. Um, we'll go over to... Uh... This person I found last night, so we'll go back over to him tonight. Uh, Kit. Kitty. Sweet. And so join me in the raid chat, stick around for the raid. Again, uh, thank y'all for hanging out tonight. Um, I do appreciate, I do appreciate it. Um, going over to Kitty, Kitty Full Nines. Kitty Full Nines. Kitty Full Nines. Um, anyway, uh, thanks yeah. for all the follows. Huge, huge donos and bits and subs tonight. Thanks for so many subs, especially big shouts to Afton and Kyle. Uh, so many bits and subs gifted tonight. Thank y'all. Next week is the championships. I hope to see everyone there next week. Bring your friends. Last episode of Slice for the season, and we have so many surprises for you. Ne er, next episode next episode so many surprises um meg any 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 uh final thoughts for the evening no i'm just excited to to be here i mean this is the summer of slice for me and it's been incredible to see the show to see chat to see our contestants evolve and i'm super pumped super pumped to see the final next week all right so. y'all uh, I'll see you over in Kitty Fullness, Kitty Full Nine stream. Have a good night. Have a good night, chat.